Around two years ago, I began a hardcore Minecraft journey, and knowing how difficult hardcore can be, I didn't expect to make it far. But creating this world was the best decision I've ever made. Not only was I able to complete some of Minecraft's hardest challenges, I was also able to survive 1,000 days. And now, for the first time ever, I bring you the full 1,000 days movie, containing every single day of this adventure. The progress you're about to see in this video from day 1 to day 1,000 is truly amazing. So, whether you're doing homework or simply just want to watch the crazy progression of this world, I hope you enjoy this movie. Now, here is the entire story of surviving 1000 days in hardcore Minecraft. So, here we go. It was day one and I jumped straight into things. Close to my spawn there was a forest and I began chopping a tree with my hand. It wasn't the most comfortable thing, but it was my only option. From my Minecraft experience, I knew getting basic tools and even shelter was my number one priority, especially in a hardcore world. Over a lake nearby, I spotted some sugarcane, a useful item which I know I'd be needing later. After gathering all the sugarcane, I dived into a river nearby. I needed food. I found some fish. I knew starting out, food could be a challenge, so I decided to get this as fast as I possibly could. Once I gathered a few fish, I went off exploring. I tried to find somewhere high up. I tried a tree. I got on top and I looked around for pigs or cows or anything. Luckily for me, I spotted some pigs. After I took the food I needed, I decided to take my pickaxe and start digging down. I needed temporary shelter. It was nothing great, but it did the job. Took my crafting table, and I started going lower down into the ground. I crafted a furnace and instantly put my food in there. My hunger was already beginning to deplete. While I was letting my food cook, I decided to go to the overworld and chop trees until the sunset. And there I was. The first day was coming to a close. I stood there and watched the sunset. But not for long. I needed to get back down to my base. I knew that things were about to get very, very scary outside. So I then decided to spend that night mining for all the essentials. Coal, iron, and maybe even some diamonds if I was to get lucky. I didn't find too much iron, but I found enough for a pickaxe and a sword. So I decided to craft both of these. Here we go. It was day two. I looked out my base and I saw sunlight. Day two wasn't really exciting. I went adventures to places I haven't ever been before and found some cows and even some sheep. But unfortunately for those sheep, a wolf was very, very hungry. Anyway, it took me so long to get these cows back to my base, the sun was already beginning to set. I gave the cows their new home and trapped them in. At this point, everything was looking good. I lit up their island and decided to make a shield, and that was pretty much it for day two. Day 3, things started to get interesting. I took my iron pickaxe and my stone pickaxe on a mining trip and found a cave. I knew that I needed iron and I needed armor and I needed it fast. I found loads of iron. In fact, I nearly found a whole entire stack of it. I knew this would be enough to make all the essential tools and even some armor. I was very careful walking around this cave. The lava could have got me out of the game instantly, but I turned around and there it was. Diamonds, just over the lava. Unfortunately for me, it was only two diamonds, but it was diamonds and I took them. After getting the diamonds, I knew I needed to get out of there and make the armor. On my way back, I found my first enemy, but it was no problem, and I took care of the zombie pretty easily. I then went back up to the top and made all my armor. And there it was. I stood there with my full iron armor on, and I was ready for day four. Up until day four, I had nowhere to call home, so that was when construction started. I wanted an underground base. I wanted to minimize my interaction with enemies, so I thought by setting up base underground, I could be safe here. After I'd finished the first stage of construction, I began adding in some chests. I would need some storage later down the line. I mostly did base work for day four, which led us on to day five. I spent this day pretty much underground, mining for coal and all of the other essentials. I had a lot of coal and iron, but not enough. I then went above ground to take care of my cows and chop down some trees. Day 6. I was mining for absolutely ages. I came across a bunch of enemies, but also some valuables. Gold, redstone, lapis, and even some diamonds. I spent many, many days mining and found many, many diamonds. I needed diamond armor if I was going to survive any longer. For day 9, I went back above ground. I needed to set up my farms and get my cows breeding. So that is exactly what I did. And also the cows seemed pretty happy to see me. To start day 10, I decided to smelt everything I had mined from the previous days. And I even saved up enough diamonds to build a diamond pickaxe. This could take me on to the next stage of the game. The nether. It was the end of day 10 and the start of day 11. 
I decided to go mining through obsidian because I knew of course I'd be able to make a nether portal. So that's what I did. And I also did some housework and dived into the river to do some extension of my island. Day 13 I went exploring close to my base and stumbled across this abandoned nether portal. I was able to pick up some goods. Day 14 I built some base protection so no mobs could enter. From around day 15 to day 19, I went back down to the depths of the caves to see if I could get my hands on some more diamonds. I was close to getting diamond armor, but not close enough, so I went mining for these days to secure every last diamond I needed. I also picked up some iron and some coal on the way. Day 19, I got back to my base. I had secured 38 diamonds in total. This was my opportunity to cover myself in diamond armor. So that is exactly what I did. I started crafting the diamond armor and even made a sword. By that time, the advancement was made. I was stood there in my shiny blue diamond armor, but I was not worthy of wearing it yet. So I decided to put it back on an armor stand and put my iron armor on, and then I went back out to my farm to do some more work on it. I knew that if I wanted to go any further, I would need to breed my cows for an enchantment table. But on the way back to my base, something unimaginable happened. A new foe had appeared outside my base in the river. I knew that I had to take care of it. I got my bow and arrow and I took a brief moment in my base to realize what I was about to get myself into. A battle. Then the time came. I take aim and took them out one by one. They dropped some loot and some valuables so I went into the river to collect that. But in return of winning this battle, I was given a curse. Before I knew it, it was day 21. I decided to do some more building in my base and it was a really chillax day. I used my bedroom as an opportunity to show off my valuables using blocks of lapis, redstone, iron and gold. It was day 22 and I decided to go and breed all of my cows and get ready to get rid of them for all of their leather. It was time to prepare the enchantment table. I went back to my base and decided to craft up some bookshelves. This would be needed for the enchanting room. For day 24 I realized I need a place for this enchantment table. I couldn't just place it anywhere and I needed some space for the bookshelves, so I decided to build a whole entire room for it. I even made a room for things such as smokers and blast furnaces to speed up things like smelting. I also took the opportunity at the end of day 24 to build a massive mine all the way down to diamond level. It was day 25 and I set up the bookshelves and got ready for the enchantment table. I built it by placing my two diamonds, four obsidian and one book in there. It was ready to be planted and there it was. I did some extra decorating to the place and it ended up looking pretty nice. The first thing I decided to enchant was my diamond pickaxe. And I got the best enchants I could have possibly asked for. The sword not so much. It took a few attempts but I got there in the end with a decent enchant I was happy with. I then realized it was time to enter the nether. I needed more XP and I needed it pretty fast so I went deep into the nether to try and get some quartz and XP. Luckily for me the fortress was really close by but I needed to find some piglins. These would become useful for trading. So that was it. I trapped a piglin and tossed him a bunch of gold. He done some really good trades and I ended up getting around about 16 of Eye of Enders. I then went to explore in the fortress, going past withers and also some blazes for some blaze powder. For most of the days in day 31 onwards, I decided that it would be best to make the Eye of Enders, make an ender chest and even get some more XP for enchanting. I also got some glowstone because this could be used to decorate my base and light it up a little bit more. I pretty much spent day 31 all the way to 40 pretty much going for XP. After enchanting most of my armor, it was getting closer to the moment that I was scared for. The Ender Dragon fight. Although I knew I was going to be prepared, it was still a worry, because one wrong move with the Ender Dragon, and it's all over. By day 38, I was fully enchanted up, and day 39, I pretty much spent doing some decorating around my base and getting some phantom membranes. I could use phantom membranes for potions of slow falling, which would be useful for the end. I also went collecting arrows. By day 40, I went exploring. At first, my adventure was quiet, until this happened. A village. I found some friendly villagers which allowed me to do trades. It took a while, but I was able to get a mending book, something which was a game changer for the future of this world. So I spent day 41 pretty much waiting until all the villagers were ready to trade. I then went with my sticks and got a bunch of emeralds, which ultimately meant I could go back to the librarian and purchase one of his mending books. It was day 44. I was able to put mending on my pickaxe and rename it. Day 45, Ender Dragon preparation was well underway, making potions of strength and also slow falling. I did brewing for quite a while. I wanted to over prepare as much as possible for the Ender Dragon fight just in case anything was to go wrong. 
Day 46, I did some last preparations for the Ender Dragon fight, going out to find some apples. The reason I got apples is to ultimately make golden apples, something which would be very useful for the end fight. Here it was, day 47. I walked around my base and gave it one last look, and I said goodbye, because it may be the last time I ever see this again. I gave everything one last glance, even my cows. To end off day 47, I got some rest. The next day was a massive day, the Ender Dragon fight. Day 48, I checked through my inventory and made sure I had everything I would need for the Ender Dragon fight. One wrong move here and everything could be all over. Everything I've worked hard for so far, but that didn't stop me. I threw my eyes of Ender in the air and I was ready to go exploring. At one point I had to set sail across the ocean. It wasn't ideal, but it had to be done. Finding this stronghold took multiple days. In fact, the Eyes of Ender were pointing me in every direction possible. Until I came too close that the Eye of Ender couldn't go anywhere else apart from directly above the stronghold. I dug straight down, and here it was. For day 52, I pretty much spent that day exploring the stronghold and was able to come out with some pretty good books. And then it was time. I prepared the end portal, and everything was beginning to seem real. I drank both of my potions, and there was no turning back now. I entered the portal calmly and went up to the Ender Dragon fight. This was it. At first, my aim felt a bit weird, but as the battle progressed, I became more and more confident. My aim was incredible. Most of my shots were accurate, but the Ender Dragon was too fast for me. I had to get rid of the End Crystals before it was too late. All my bow shots were pretty accurate until the end. I had a massive struggle trying to get one of them. I fired my bow and there it was. The final End Crystal. I glanced around and there was no more to be destroyed. It was time for the Ender Dragon fight itself. The Ender Dragon was quick, but not quick enough. In fact, I was able to get a small glass of its Dragon Breath. It came down to the middle and I attacked its tail. This was the easiest way I was going to get rid of this. Luckily for me, it came down again and I was able to finish off the battle. There it was, the Ender Dragon, disintegrating in front of my eyes. I felt victorious. I grabbed the egg, and look at that smile on my face. I was happy, but not happy enough. I needed elytras. I went into the end city and looked around. After a while of exploring, I found one, and I was scared it didn't have a boat, until I glanced over to the left, and there it was. The end ship. This contains an elytra, which would change the whole way I could move around in this game. I swung my pickaxe and got entry under the boat. I was able to take the elytras, and also some valuables in the chests. I equipped the elytras and debated whether I should leave the end city, but no. I needed to loot it. The shulker boxes that were in the end city were too good to pass by, but after that, I then decided to head home. There it was, day 66, I had the Ender Dragon head. I placed it on an armor stand and gave it some clothes. Day 67, I used that time to enchant some more and got a sword. And day 68, well, I had elytras. And I got a bit too excited. From day 69 to 74, this is my time to build. I had a bunch of creativity that I need to let out. So I built a bridge from my house all the way to the farm island. I also built a bit of a better house for the cows and some cool pathways. I also made space for a potato farm and also a wheat farm. And also, because enemy creatures were able to get on my island, I built a massive wall surrounding it. And there it was. By day 74, I was really happy with my base. The outside and the inside. I pretty much had everything I need, but I wasn't finished yet. I had two other goals to get done, the netherite and also the wither. These weren't going to be easy, so I got to work. Well, now was the time for me to prepare for my next goal, and that would be the wither battle. So to start day 75, I went through and enchanted a sword to try and get looting, because to get wither heads, you need really good luck or you need a really good sword. After using plenty of XP and Lapis, I was able to get a looting too, but it wasn't good enough. But I had to deal with it. Being only level 28, I wasn't able to do another level 30 enchant, so I decided to go into the nether with a looting too and test my luck. As I entered the nether portal, I went straight to the fortress and was able to pick up my first witherhead pretty quickly. But between days 77 and 84, I spent a very, very long time attempting to get all of the witherheads. I battled plenty of angry withers and was getting unlucky every single time. This left me with only one thing to do. After exploring the fortress and realizing this looting too wasn't going to cut it anymore, I went back to do some more enchanting. Seeing as all I had to do was get two looting twos to combine to a looting three, and then combine the two looting twos to make a looting three, that's what I did. I got to level 14 and was just about able to do the upgrade. 
I now had a looting three sword at my disposal. And from there on, it seemed like the Withers didn't want to stop dropping the Witherheads. I got all of the Witherheads I needed really, really fast, but I wasn't done with the Nether yet. Between days 91 and 97, I decided to go for Netherite. I thought maybe if I could get a Netherite sword, the Wither battle would be easier. So I tried to get as much Netherite as I could. Seeing as I was tight for time, I was only able to get a certain amount. That certain amount being 8 pieces of Ancient Debris. With 8 pieces of Ancient Debris, you're able to make 2 pieces of Netherite ingots, which was good enough for a pickaxe upgrade and a sword upgrade. I was debating whether I should upgrade my armor, but I realized pretty quickly it was way better to upgrade my pickaxe and sword, seeing as these had decent enchants. Before I knew it, it was day 99. I spent this day preparing for the Wither fight. I was able to get hold of some strength potions I had from the Ender Dragon fight left over, made some arrows and I was ready to go. I dug in one straight line, drunk my strength potion and I was ready to go. All I had to do was place the last Wither Head. And there it was. The Wither Head was placed and it was spawned. If anything was to go wrong, not only would I be out of the game, but the Wither also has explosive projectiles, meaning if it was to get up to my base, the whole entire island that I had would be gone. But thankfully, I had the effect of the strength too keeping me going and the Wither was out the game before I knew it. And there it was. The Nether Star was gripped in my hands, so I went straight back to my base to craft it into a beacon. I placed the Nether Star right in the center of the crafting bench and there it was. I placed the beacon in my inventory and it was day 100. To finish off day 100, I put my beacon on my island, equipped its speed to it, and that was it. It was now time for day 101, and I glanced around my island and said hi to my cows. As cool as it was to look around my island again, and even say hello to my cows, I couldn't let that distract me from what really needed to be done on day 101. I knew as soon as I was diving back in to do another 200 days, I would need villagers, and I would need a lot of them. So I checked my chest and saw I only had one piece of iron. I would need iron for a bunch of rail carts to be able to transport the villagers all the way over from the village to my base. It would be a very difficult task to do, but it was needed. I mined in one straight line for quite some time, coming across all of the valuables I could think of, but the only thing I needed was iron, so I kept going until I stumbled across an abandoned ravine. I hadn't been here before, but I knew for sure it looked unsafe. As long as I got the iron I needed and got out of there, I would be fine, right? Well, that's what I thought. Until, as I was mining for the iron, strange creatures were trying to run at me and attack me. I was able to fend them off for a while and get the iron I needed, but something unimaginable happened. A brand new enemy I hadn't seen before. The Flying Creeper. And it wasn't only one Flying Creeper. To my surprise, there was two of these things. Um, I need to get this iron, and I have to get out of here. Oh, this is dangerous. I knew I had to get the iron quick, but I just couldn't help myself. There was too many diamonds. Yes, we got more diamonds. With the power of Fortune 3, I was quickly able to turn these two diamonds into three, and I was able to get all the iron I needed. I checked my inventory and saw that I had stacks on stacks of iron, so I decided to leave it there and go home for day 101. I was so happy to be back on my island, and I got a good night's rest ready for day 102. Surprisingly, day 102 was a lot less action-packed than day 101. I pretty much chopped trees until the sun set, and I got a bunch of sticks ready to craft all of the rails I would need. It became nighttime really, really quickly, so I headed back to my base and got ready for day 103, where I basically spent all of my gold and all of my iron on rails. I then equipped my elytras and went flying out to find the village again. I sort of knew where it was, so I headed in the direction to find the village, and there it was. I was inside the village and I prepared the rails. I didn't have enough rails to go straight to my base, so I did have to keep going back, destroying rails, and pretty much reusing them. This took ages. Now, getting the villagers back to my base actually took a lot longer than I expected, and the reason for that is because every time I accidentally broke the minecart or something, the villagers did not want to cooperate. They would run as far away from the minecart as possible, and it was getting really, really hard to keep them under control. But when I was bringing the villagers back to my base, one of them wanted to speak to me and tell me about something. I found this rather interesting, and I guess I'll tell you guys what he wanted me to tell you about, so... Here we go. He told me to tell you guys how there is only a limited time left on the Halloween event on my server. So guys, if you haven't already joined, make sure you do so because when this event ends, there'll be a brand new one. And I'm sure you guys don't want to miss out. So join the survival experience right now. But without further ado, 
Let's get these villagers back to my base. Now, another thing I will add on getting these villagers back to my base, there was so many mobs on the way, and seeing as I didn't bring a bed with me, the mobs were getting out of control. But, thankfully, by day 107, I was able to get all the villagers down in my base. I was super excited, and all of that hard work was over. I didn't have to go back to the village ever again. I could breed the villagers right here. I was super happy until this happened. No, no, no! <gasps> oh, no. There's a villager in the nether. This is not good. This is not good. Where did it go? No, it's gone. Where is the villager gone? All of that hard work, and it's gone. There's no way I forgot to block off the nether portal. I've got to go and do that all again. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe that's just happened. Seeing as I had already brought two villagers from the village back to my base, getting the third one there was pretty easy. I patched up my base, and I learned from my mistakes and blocked off the nether portal as well. Anyway, this was it. I had the two villagers in my base, so I threw them some potatoes and tried to get them to breed. By day 110, we had another villager in the base. Up to this point, I was doing some pretty advanced stuff, and I forgot about the basics, you know, farming and even breeding my cows. So that's what I ended up doing for day 110, but then I thought, I can't just let the villagers live in my base. They need their own home. So that's where I dived into the depths of the nether to try and get some resources to build them a base. I saw this green wood and I liked the look of it, so that's basically what I spent the other half of day 110 doing. I got a bunch of building resources, and I kind of had a good idea of what I should do for the villagers' home. Oh, and not to mention, on the way back home, I found an old friend, the Mending Villager. But he didn't want to go back through the portal, so I decided to make him his own luxury mansion. Just kidding, I put him somewhere else. Uh, I guess he liked it there. Anyway, I got some glowstone and more building resources, and I was ready for day 111, where I was going to build the villagers the best home they had ever seen. I spent days crafting a brand new home for the villagers. I really wanted them to like it, and I wanted it to feel like home. So I built this big area where they can all meet up, and most importantly, do their trades. I also created multiple holes in the walls. This would be a place where I could store the villagers that have the best trades, so I don't end up losing them or muddling them up with the other villagers. Before I knew it, I was completely done making the villagers' brand new home, and by day 116, it was time to move all the villagers in to their brand new home. I transported them down and take a second to look at the smiles on their faces. They were very happy, so I decided to to give them some potatoes, but I thought one thing was missing. It didn't feel enough like home for them, so I decided to bring down a bunch of beds. After moving them in, I created a bunch of bone meal because I thought I would need a bunch of potatoes if I actually wanted the villagers to breed, so I spent a lot of day 117 farming for a bunch of potatoes. I was able to get quite a lot of potatoes, and I decided then to bring them down into the villagers' home and throw all of the potatoes at them to see if they would breed. And to my surprise, they did. By 118, we had a brand new villager. I made some workbenches as well to see if I could get lucky with a mending book. It did take quite a lot of time to try and get the trades I wanted. And after a bunch of terrible enchanted books, I was super excited that I had a mending villager right under my base. And one of the villagers escaped. So I guess I have one just roaming around my base now. One of the villagers became a farmer. They were doing 26 potatoes for one emerald. And this was amazing. I was able to use all my bone meal, regrow up all of the potatoes, and basically have an infinite supply of emeralds. I'm hoping that maybe with these emeralds I can get an emerald beacon eventually, but for now I was focusing on the mending book. I went back down to that villager, sold all of my potatoes for emeralds, and was getting a step closer to having a mending book, and I wanted to use this mending book on my elytras. Eventually I was able to get enough emeralds, went up, crafted a book, headed over to the villager, and they were happy to do the trade for the mending book. I then put the mending book on the elytras, and I then had a mending elytra. For day 119, I decided it was time to plan my next adventure. I wanted to explore the nether, so I went out and got a bunch of creepers to get gunpowder to make a bunch of fireworks so I could fly freely around the nether and explore it as much as I wanted. By the end of day 120, I had a bunch of gunpowder that I turned into fireworks and decided it was time to go to my next adventure, the nether. I spent some time mending up my elytra and decided it was then time to venture around the nether. I had a bunch of fireworks, really good durability on my elytras, so I was ready. I flew all around the nether to see what I could find and came across this interesting broken down building. I decided to give it a deeper look and see what I could get from the inside. I was in this sculpture and surprised how easy it was. There was not really any threats from the inside and thought nothing could go wrong. But that wasn't the case at all. I got ambushed by a bunch of piglings sabotaging me from all directions. I needed to get out. My heart's got low. Probably the lowest they've 
been throughout the 120 days I've survived so far. I was there on two and a half hearts. No totem of undying and no way I could get out of this. Luckily, I was able to block off the entrances of the piglings and was able to heal up a little bit. This was very scary and I also made a very beginner mistake. I didn't even have my chest plate on. I forgot to take off the elytras. With the chest plate on, I was able to take a little bit more damage, but I did find these chests, but there was two piglings guarding these. After I had dealt with the piglins, I went to see what rewards were waiting for me in the chests. The loot that I had found in the chests weren't that good, so I decided to keep exploring around the nether to see if I could find another one of these things and see if I could get any better loot. As I was looking around, I did manage to stumble across another one. I calmly climbed up it and saw that there were some gold blocks awaiting me up ahead. But also some foes as well. I looked down the center of this thing and I knew it wasn't going to be easy to try and get the loot from inside. Although, I did manage to find two chests in there, and they didn't really have anything too crazy inside of them. Seeing as there was nothing too crazy in the chests, I decided to keep on exploring, and I got ambushed once again. But luckily for me, the ambush wasn't nearly as bad as the last one, and I was able to keep this one under control. After finding my way through this abandoned structure, I made my way to the center, where I was able to see a spawner and also destroy it. But more importantly, there were so many valuable golden blocks, and even to my surprise, I checked the chest and I could not believe my eyes. Ancient debris and netherite from one single chest. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Once I had placed the ancient debris and netherite in my inventory, I decided it was time to go home. I couldn't risk going to any more of these structures and thought it would be best if I was just to go back to my base, so that is exactly what I did. Although, with some of the damage I'd taken on the way back, most of my armor was completely destroyed, which made me want to get some more, and I kind of wanted it to be netherite armor this time. I managed to find another enchanted diamond helmet in my storage room, so I used this temporarily. Even though I found this helmet, it wasn't good enough, so I decided to go mining for some diamonds to see if I could get diamond armor and then convert it over to netherite, but as I was going mining, I heard a strange noise. To my surprise, it was a skeleton spawner. This was perfect. This meant infinite bone mill and infinite arrows. I took my opportunity to clear this thing out, and in the future, I would definitely be making this into an XP farm. For the rest of day 124, I went to go and get some ancient debris. Seeing as my armor was pretty much all destroyed at this point, I needed to get netherite to make netherite armor. I thought mining for ancient debris would be the safest way, so that's exactly what I did. I went down to the ancient debris layer, and I found so much ancient debris. It was like I couldn't stop finding ancient debris. It only took me a couple of days before I had all the ancient debris I would need to make a full set of armor and even some tools. Everything was going amazing, and by the end of day 126, I had all of the ancient debris I would need, but I couldn't use it yet, so I decided to craft it and store it up in my storage room for now. To begin day 127, I went farming and even traded with some of my farmer villages. I needed to start getting a collection of emeralds to spend on the books that the librarians had. For the other half of day 127 and a few days afterwards, I decided to get all the diamonds I would need to make a full set of diamond armor again, and then once I had the diamond armor, I could obviously turn it into netherite. So mining diamonds is exactly what I did for the next few days. By day 129, I smelted all of my valuables and had enough diamonds for another set of diamond armor. I also took some time to take a glance at the diamond armor I was already wearing. The enchants I had on my leggings were pretty much perfect, so I decided I only need to enchant a helmet, a chest plate, and some boots. So that's when I spent the next few days trying to get a protection four book and an unbreaking three book from villagers. It took quite some time, but I was able to do it in the end, and I was extremely happy. For day 136, I decided to make a fletching table and also place around a bunch of composters to get some more farmers. I did this because for day 137, I decided to build a farm. With all of the stuff I would be able to get from this farm, it would basically give me the opportunity to get unlimited emeralds. So over the next few days, I built this farm. And it was a pretty good extension onto the island as well. By day 141, I decided to repair my shovel and head to the farm to start planting all of the crops. I then went down to the skeleton spawner to get a bunch of bones so I could get some bone meal to speed up the growing process on all of my plants. I also spent some time chopping down trees so I could get sticks to sell to the Fletcher for emeralds. For most of the next few days, I spent the time in the farm. I thought if I was able to get a bunch of emeralds quickly, I could buy all the books I would need and be able to have the best gear I could ask for. Oh, and when I say I went farming, I really mean I went farming. I kept on getting all of my potatoes and then heading back over to the villages to sell it. I also did this with wheat. I was able to get to a point where I could go over to the librarian and purchase some of the mending books. I put the mending books on my armor and even some of the tools, and not to mention the two Unbreaking 3 books I bought for my axe and my shovel as well. While I was enchanting, I also didn't have enough XP left. So I did have to head into the nether to get some XP, but once I had done that, I had all of the best enchants on the tools that I needed, and even turned them into netherite. 
I enjoyed farming so much that for the rest of day 150 onwards, I built a massive extension onto the island, one that would change the game forever. With this massive amount of land, I could have so many crops growing at once that I would just have an unlimited source of emeralds. The villagers were always happy to trade with me because I would always bring them so many gifts. While I was waiting for villagers to breed, I thought this would be a perfect time to prepare for an ocean monument battle. I needed a puffer fish so I could get some potions, and I got one by the end of day 154. I headed into my base and started brewing up some potions. These would be needed for the ocean monument battle. Not only did I make water breathing potions, I also made night vision potions so I could see under the water when I was there. I also went back down to my villages, sold everything I could for emeralds because when I wanted to take on the ocean monument, I know I would be needing the best gear I could get my hands on. So for this reason, I spent the next few days spending all of my emeralds on the librarian books. I picked up some protection books and also some unbreaking books as well. I went ahead and merged the enchanted book with the armor piece. I had my helmet enchanted with all of the best enchants. I even had my chest plate enchanted with all of the best enchants as well, but when it got to the boots, again, I ran out of XP, so I needed to head back to the nether to go and mine a bunch of quartz so I could get up to the level I needed. After breaking a bunch of quartz and getting XP, I was able to do the enchant on my boots, and there it was. Once I was able to put all of the enchants on, I individually handcrafted every piece of armor into netherite. I felt powerful, and I was ready to take on an ocean monument. It was day 166. I sold my last final potatoes before setting off to the Ocean Monument. I was a little bit nervous to go to the Ocean Monument, but I knew with my overpowered armor, I would be able to take it out just fine. I did some last final preparation by getting buckets of milk that I could drink if I was to get any of the bad effects over at the Ocean Monument. Now, it was time. I threw my Eye of Ender, and I knew that if I kept following the direction it told me to go, I would soon go past the Ocean Monument. I remembered this from the last time I went to the Stronghold, so instead of wasting emeralds on buying a map to get over to the Ocean Monument, I just used my memory from the last time I went to the Stronghold and passed the Ocean Monument. I glanced over at the Ocean Monument. If one thing was to go wrong here, here, my whole world would be gone. I did one last check over my inventory to make sure I had everything, and it was time. I drank my potion of night vision, and then I drank my potion of water breathing. I got everything ready, and I dived into the depths of the ocean to take on this ocean monument. It was extremely intimidating, and I did go over to one of the guardians to test how much damage it did. It only did a roundabout heart, so I knew I was safe from these, but these weren't what I had to be scared of. There was something way more dangerous on the inside of this ocean monument, and I was scared to face it, but it had to be done. I briefly explored around the ocean monument to know where to go and where not to go in an emergency situation. But before I knew it, I was face to face with one of the scariest foes I've ever encountered. The Elder Guardian. Luckily for me, I was too fast for the Elder Guardian. It was too big and slow. So I was able to use my bow to my advantage and quickly jump behind a wall if needs be. Things were getting intense, but with the last final bow shot, I took it out. I went over to collect the loot it dropped and it gave a sponge. I knew somewhere else in this ocean monument there would be a whole room filled with sponge. And before I knew it, that's exactly what I found. Oh, and these jump scare things are actually pretty scary. As I crept round another corner, I was face to face with an Elder Guardian once again, but this was different. It had a bunch of minions guarding it. I was able to pick my bow shots and get quite close to the Guardians and do some sword damage, but there I was, once again, face to face with another Elder Guardian, and I knew after this one, there would only be one more left. Before I knew it, I had taken care of that Elder Guardian way faster than I imagined. It was now on to the final Elder Guardian. Once I got rid of this, I was free to take any of the loot from the Ocean Monument I wanted, without worrying about mining fatigue. Here it was, the final Elder Guardian. If I was able to get rid of this, I could claim the Ocean Monument to be mine and collect all the goodies from inside. I felt victorious. I'd got rid of all the Elder Guardians around and was able to claim all the blocks inside for myself. I got all of the sponge and even some Dark Prismarine as well. Oh, and let's not forget the sea lanterns. I had won another battle, but I had so many days left and there was so much I wanted to do. One thing I wanted to do was build a max level beacon, but I can't just put a max level beacon anywhere. I had to build an island extension just for this beacon. So that's exactly what I did.
By day 175, I placed the beacon right on top of all of the blocks I had gathered over time. I had some iron, I had some gold, and even some emerald blocks I got from trading. But probably, before 300 days, I would like to mine a full diamond beacon. Before I knew it, it was day 176, and I knew exactly what I wanted to do before day 200, and let's just say, I wanted to be another boss. That's right, I wanted to take on the Ender Dragon once again. I had already done it once in 100 days, and I wanted to prove myself again by doing it in 200 days, so I looked around the nether for quite some time to try and find some gas tiers. This would be needed to respawn the Ender Dragon into the world. Between days 177 to 185, I spent trying to get gas tiers, and got pretty much unlucky the whole time until one single ghast dropped four gas tiers. This was amazing. I could go back to my base and get ready to fight the Ender Dragon for a second time. To end off day 186, I surrounded the crafting table in glass, put the Eye of Enders in the center, and put the gas tiers on the bottom. I then directly placed all end crystals into my inventory and got ready for day 187, where I would set sail into the ocean to try and find the stronghold for the second time. It took multiple days to make my way back over to the stronghold. But on day 194, I found the remains of some cobblestone I placed the last time I was over here. I used this entrance to make my way back into the stronghold. This time I took no hesitation and dived right into the end portal. It was time to prove myself. I slowly placed each end crystal directly where it needed to be. It was time to face the Ender Dragon once again. One by one, the obsidian towers began to summon themselves once again. I awaited the dragon's arrival. And before I knew it, I alighted straight on top of one of the obsidian towers. I knew if I was at high ground, I'd be able to take each tower out one by one. With the elytras, I felt unstoppable this time. Getting rid of the end crystals on the obsidian towers was no worries, so I decided to head to the center where the ender dragon was and started dealing some serious damage. For most of the fight, I was on the same level as the Ender Dragon, gliding around with my elytras, but before I knew it, I was completely out of rockets, and eventually out of arrows. I kept having to wait till the Ender Dragon came to the center so I could deal some damage with my sword. And there it was. Once again, I saw the Ender Dragon disintegrate in front of my eyes. I didn't get as much XP this time, but I still felt victorious. I proved myself for a second time and gazed over at a second portal that had been opened in return for me getting rid of the Ender Dragon for the second time. I would save this for 300 days. After getting some rest on day 199, I didn't have too much time left and it was already day 200. So for this day, I did small decorations on the island which I kept the beacon. But before I knew it, it was day 200. After spending day 200 celebrating another 100 days survived, I wanted to go and check on my cows. I went in to see them and I mean just look at the smile on their faces. They were so excited to see me back. But the cows weren't the only thing I had to go and say hello to. From the last 100 days, I actually got some new guests in my base, so I went to see how they were doing as well. I went down to say hi to all of my villagers, and when I went down there, I realized that there was a massive infestation of iron golems. This was, um, this was pretty scary. After walking around my island and saying hello to everyone, I needed to get back to work. There was a lot of stuff I needed to get done, so I went straight over to my farm and extended it as much as I could. There was some more space for potatoes, so I spent the rest of day 201 filling up this farm as much as I could. Because not only could I use the potatoes to trade with the villagers and get infinite emeralds, it was also my source of food. So for the rest of day 201, I planted as much as the farm as I possibly could. Also, to finish off the time I had left on day 201, I went down to the mines and started on my next project. This would be the Creeper Farm. An infinite source of gunpowder, leading to an infinite source of fireworks. 
With fireworks, not only could I venture wherever I wanted to go, I could also escape bad situations efficiently. At this point, if I wanted to survive any longer, a creeper farm would be extremely necessary, so I spent the next few days mining as much iron and all of the other resources I could, not only for the creeper farm, but also just to get stacked on valuables. On this mining trip, not only did I want to get valuables such as gold and diamonds, I also needed the essentials, so I mined every piece of coal, iron, and even redstone I could get my hands on. My plan was to mine as many valuables as I could, but as I was on this mining trip, something terrible happened. I tripped into lava. This was bad. Lava can deal some serious damage and I was at danger here. Just kidding, I had netherite armor. It didn't really deal too much damage. I ventured around this cave and I came across something dangerous. A group of strange creatures, they came running at me and the scariest thing was a skeleton teamed up with the creeper to propel towards me. I was in some serious danger, but the creeper did actually end up blowing up a hole in the wall which revealed some diamonds from behind, which was pretty lucky. Once I had mined the diamonds, I realized why the creeper blew up this exact location of the cave, and that was because it was a lucky creeper. It had obviously played on my server before, how clumsy of me, and that's why I think you guys should join as well. I mean, just look how much fun me and my friends are having, so make sure to check it out. There's a bunch of awesome events coming up that I'm sure you guys will be interested in. After dealing with all of the strange creatures and threats that I had in the caves, I decided to make my way back up to my base where I would look at all of my valuables again and realize just how much time I had spent mining. I wouldn't need to go on another mining trip for a very long time. And I pretty much had everything I would need for the gunpowder farm. I took some time to place my diamonds into my ender chest because even though I just got finished mining, the adventures weren't over yet. I had to dive into the depths of the nether to try and get all of the rest of the resources that I would need for this creeper farm. This would include magma blocks. After obtaining all of the magma blocks I needed, I headed back to the overworld to craft all of the other things I would need for the creeper farm. Things like trap doors and also fence gates. I also realized I didn't have as much wood as I thought. So I spent some time chopping down some trees to get all of the wood I would need for the trap doors. I would need a lot of trap doors. And when I say a lot, I really mean a lot of trap doors. To finish off day 212, I crafted the final things I would needed and began construction on the creeper farm. After spending days upon days of hard work on this creeper farm, it was finally complete. So I set up my temporary sugarcane farm so I could get some paper, and it was time to test out this creeper farm. I wanted to see truly how efficient this thing was going to be, so that's when I decided to spend a few days testing it out. It got to day 227, it was time to check how much gunpowder I had made. I checked the chests and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So much gunpowder. I couldn't wait any longer to turn this into fireworks, so I headed to my temporary sugarcane farm, made as much paper as I could, and made a bunch of fireworks. Once I had placed the paper and the gunpowder in the crafting table and created all of these fireworks, it was time to put them into good use. In the last 100 days, I summoned the portal, which I got in return for defeating the Ender Dragon. It was time to go in there and see what adventures awaited. So I dived into the portal and I found myself on top of some sort of massive plant. I was a little bit confused, but I moved on. I spent some time flying around the end and after not too long, I stumbled across something amazing. An end city and it included a ship. I went inside to explore and after taking care of one of the shulkers, I had another pair of elytras at my disposal. This would be a spare elytra if I ever needed it. I also took some time to go in the chest and see what valuables were awaiting me in there. There was some pretty good stuff. After I'd taken care of the end ship, I decided to go into the end city itself and see what other loot I could get my hands on. There was some incredible loot, but I had to make my way home before anything bad happened, so that's exactly what I did. When I got back to my base, I crafted some more shulker boxes and even made some farming equipment. With this farming equipment, I could finish off my farm and completely fill it with all of the potatoes I would need. And by day 230, I decided it would be best to craft a cartography table. I needed to start my next adventure, and this would be the Woodland Mansion. Now, for me to defeat a Woodland Mansion, this would require a lot of preparation, and the first piece of this preparation was to get my hands on the Woodland Mansion map. So, for that reason, I decided to make some small improvements onto the villagers' home, but the thing was, 
one of the people living in the villager's home wasn't very happy with me doing this. And well, it was an iron golem that got angry at me. It obstructed me from breaking one of the composters which made it angry with me and it chased me down. Also, not to mention, it did a chunk of damage. If I was to take another hit from this, it could have been all over. But thankfully, I handled it pretty well. But I also realised, if I was to get one of the iron golems angry, then wouldn't the rest be annoyed at me? Well, no. They were absolutely fine with me. I don't know why that iron golem was so annoyed at me for just wanting to place some beds for the villagers. Maybe it just didn't want to sleep. On the bright side though, we had a brand new villager in the villager home and this one would be the cartographer. In the meantime, I went back into the nether to mend up my shovel. I wanted to get a bunch of sand and gravel to start working on my next building project. This would be a mass storage room. The storage in my house was just getting a little bit old and there was too much stuff in the chests at this point. So I needed somewhere new to store all of my items. So that's when I decided to dig up all the gravel I could find in the nether. Thankfully for me, I found a bunch. And I also weirdly found a random piece of ancient debris, which was pretty cool. I spent quite a while getting gravel, so that's when I decided to switch things up and get another material that I would need for this massive new build that I was going to make. And that thing was cactus. Cactus could be used to get green and also lime dye, so I spent quite a few days gathering as much of this as I possibly could because, well, it would be a major resource that I would need for the base. Before I knew it, it was day 234, and again, my shovel was down on durability. So for this day, I spent quite a while, again, mending up my shovel. Yeah, nothing really that interesting. By day 235, I had the cartographer in the villager home, and I took a quick glance at the trades that it was offering me, and it was seven emeralds for a map. I knew that if I did enough trades with the cartographer, he would begin to like me a little bit more, and in the end, sell me what I ultimately wanted, and that would be the Woodland Mansion map. So for the rest of day 235, I spent farming up all the potatoes I would need to then sell to the villagers to get emeralds, to then make some good trades with the cartographer. And by day 236, the trades were well underway. I took another look at the villagers' trades and saw that it was doing 10 glass panes for an emerald. I realized instead of going farming again, I could go ahead over to the nearest desert and collect as much sand as I needed to not only get a bunch of glass panes, but to also get sand as well. Because if you remember earlier, I got a bunch of gravel, and gravel plus sand equals concrete. And that's the the block that I would be using for my massive build. So by day 237, when I got back to my base, I smelted up all the sand that I could to turn into glass. This would be the glass that I go ahead and sell to the villagers, and I would save the other pieces of sand to combine with the gravel for concrete for my base later on. A little later on into day 237, and I had leveled up the cartographer to the perfect level to get my hands on the wooden mansion. I went back up to get all the stuff I would need, and well, there was a cat in my base, which was pretty cool. By the end of day 237, the time had come. I had saved up all the emeralds to buy the Woodland Explorer map, and I glanced down at it to see exactly where I'd be heading next. The Woodland Mansion. Something that requires some serious preparation, and I needed to take this seriously. I spent day 238 carefully handcrafting all of the things I would need to take on my journey to the Woodland Mansion. This included golden apples, brewing up some potions, and even some arrows as well. Oh, and I may have accidentally brewed up the wrong strength potions, so I didn't want those to go to waste, and I corrected myself by making strength 2 potions. Strength 2 is a crucial potion, and would be needed if I was going to defeat the Woodland Mansion. To end off my preparation for the Woodland Mansion, I went into my skeleton spawner and collected as many arrows as I could. And before I knew it, the time for me to leave my base was here. I didn't know how long I would be gone for. In fact, if I made any mistakes in the Woodland Mansion battle, everything could be gone forever. So because of this, I went to say bye to everything I had made, because it may be the last time that I get to see any of this again. It became day 239, and at this point I was well underway with my flight over to the Woodland Mansion. I had no idea how far away this Woodland Mansion was from my base, so I had to keep a close eye on the map to see if I got any closer. And here it was. I looked at my map and saw that I was getting closer and closer. And before I knew it, I was glancing over at what could be my biggest obstacle in the 239 days I'd survived up to this point. This was going to be extremely difficult. I took a close look at the entrance door and realized that there was nothing really there, so I had a pretty easy way in. It was time. Well, it wasn't actually time. I had to dig down and get some iron in the nearest cave because I forgot my shield. But anyway, I took some quick rest out the front of the Woodland Mansion to end off day 239. And by day 240, I constructed my shield and I was ready for battle. 
After I got rid of the two zombies defending the front of the wooden mansion, I stormed in there. Nothing was going to stop me. I made sure I had my strength potions on the ready, and I explored around for a little bit and didn't come across too many foes. I took all of the loot I could, but the goodies inside this wooden mansion was nothing too crazy. The main thing I was here for was the Totems of Undying. Surprisingly, everything was going amazing until I locked eyes with my first foe inside of this wooden mansion. But to my surprise, there wasn't only one of them. There was another one sabotaging me from behind. I needed to be on high alert at all times and I had my shield equipped ready for any type of strike. After doing some exploring, I found this massive village ahead being obstructed by a creeper. I knew that if I could get inside this village ahead, there could be some kind of reward waiting for me inside. Which there was, a lapis block hidden inside of this structure. Without any hesitation, I walked up the stairs and prepared for the second floor. This one would be even more difficult than the first. The pillagers were quick, but not quick enough. My combat skills were just too good for them, and I was able to take them out pretty easily. I came across some more, and they couldn't even get one single hit on me, and if they did, it barely did any damage. There was nothing to worry about here. But unfortunately, the pillagers weren't the biggest thing that I was worried about. There was something much more dangerous inside of this woodland mansion, and I was scared to face it. I calmly spent some time looting around the woodland mansion, and came across one of the rarest items I had ever set my eyes on before. The enchanted golden apple. The enchanted golden apple could not be crafted, meaning that I was super lucky to get my hands on this thing. It truly was an incredible moment. I turned a corner in the woodland mansion, and I gazed upon some evil foes. Not only creepers and zombies, but also some pillagers helping them out as well. Things got extremely intense, and if I wasn't careful, it could have all been over here. Not only did I have the pillagers to worry about, but zombies and creeper explosions as well. I had a whole group of foes on me. I had to watch my step and try and get out of there as fast as I possibly could. I was able to use the creeper's explosion to my advantage, but there were still some more enemies left over. A pillager storming towards me, and two zombies slowly making their way over. An enemy like no other approached me, a Vex. These minions could deal some serious damage and they were just too quick for me. I was able to get face to face with the foe that was summoning in these minions. I took it out with ease, my strength potion combined with my bow was too strong for it, and it even dropped what I came here for, the Totem of Undying, which, when in my possession, would grant me with another life. As much as I wanted to pick up the totem and leave, I couldn't just simply do that. There was too many foes waiting in the Woodland Mansion, meaning if I left now, I wouldn't have fully defeated the Woodland Mansion. I had to get rid of the rest of these vexes, and even take out the third floor. After defeating these minions, I was able to pick up the Totem of Undying. The one item in the game that at this point, I truly needed. But things weren't over yet, there were still some rooms I hadn't explored and I hadn't even made it to the final top floor. I had a feeling that there was still going to be some good stuff around this woodland mansion. The last thing I had to do on the second floor though, was get rid of another evoker. I was much more prepared for this one and took it out pretty easily. After dealing with the evoker and the vexes, I went to the third floor and there was literally nothing up there. There was around about four rooms or something like that, and there was absolutely nothing. So I went back down to the second floor, grabbed the Totem of Undying, got rid of the last two Vindicators. And there it was. I had one last look around, and I'd completely taken out this wooden mansion. I was victorious. Once again, I had won another battle. I took this time to put the Totem of Undying in my hand. When I got back to my base, I wanted to display the fact that I had an enchanted golden apple, so I made a little display for this. But even though I just came out victorious from defeating a woodland mansion, that wouldn't stop me or slow me down. I had to move on to my next project, and that of course was my massive new storage room. So I spent some time making some dyes, and also set up a temporary cactus farm where I could get an infinite source of green dye, which would be used for my base. Before I knew it, it was day 242, and seeing as I was getting all of these building supplies ready for my base, I realized I didn't have too much space. So that's when I made my way over to a new end city to see if I could get some more shulker boxes, and surprisingly, there was an end ship on this one as well, completely unlooted, meaning I now have my third pair of elytras. The chests that were lying beside the elytras had some incredible swords, so I took these and planned on turning them into netherite later on. Also, I was able to get my hands on some feather falling boots. Also, when I was at the end city, I came across these end rods, and I thought they would make great decoration back at my new build that I was going to make, so I decided to take some of these with me. I then also stumbled across the jackpot and found a bunch of diamonds. By day 246, I decided to get back to my base and rest for the next day, where I would then start construction on my brand new base.
The first thing I did on day 247 was actually combine the two swords I got from the end city. This made a really good sword and eventually I could turn this sword into netherite and combine my current sword with the new sword I got, making a very, very overpowered sword. After carefully handcrafting my brand new sword, I started construction on my base. I got all of the gravel and sand I needed to create all of the concrete. I then made the final resources I would need and that's when construction started. <laughs> I was super happy with the way the base turned out, it was just what I wanted, but just like any base, it needed some lighting, so I took my silk touch pickaxe into the depths of the nether to gather a bunch of glowstone. I gathered all the glowstone that I would need and created a bunch of iron trapdoors, this would be used to kind of make the lighting look a little bit better in the roof. I couldn't just place glowstone randomly everywhere to light it up, I had to make sure it fit the theme of the build. It was day 256 and I glanced out my base and took a look at everything that I had done up to this point, and I had also fully constructed this brand new storage room. I was super happy. I spent the rest of day 256 doing some final touches to the inside of the storage room. I wanted my end chest in there as well, so I placed that in the center. And I also did a little bit of decoration around it as well. I think I did a pretty good job on this storage room if I do say so myself. By the end of day 256, I had fully completed my storage room, which led us on to day 257, where I wanted to go into the nether and collect as much ancient debris as I could get my hands on. I wanted loads of ancient debris, which led me to then go into my creeper farm and get as much gunpowder as I possibly could, so then I could make a bunch of TNT to take into the nether. From Day 258 to day 267 I spent in my creeper farm and made a bunch of gunpowder. I spent some time crafting up all the TNT and the time was here. I was about to jump into the nether portal to just see how much ancient debris I could get my hands on. Ancient debris is of course rarer than diamonds and also stronger so it wasn't going to be easy to get a bunch of this but hopefully with this amount of TNT I could get a perfect amount. I spent many many, many days exploding the nether to get a bunch of ancient debris. I spent day 271, day 272, day 273, even day 274, and day 275 using all of the TNT. At day 276, I took a glance into my inventory and saw just the amount of ancient debris that I had gathered. An incredible stack of 64 and a stack of 37. So, with a smile on my face, I headed back to my base. The first thing that I did when I got home was of course smelt up all this ancient debris. I combined the netherite scraps with gold ingots and got a bunch of netherite. I got over two blocks of netherite, which was absolutely crazy. I spent this time upgrading the diamond sword that I made earlier and then combined it with my current sword, giving me a sharpness 5 sword with a bunch of other awesome enchants on it as well. I also upgraded the feather falling boots and combined it with my main boots, meaning I now had feather falling. So if I fell off anything tall, I would be absolutely safe. After upgrading all of my gear, I realized that I didn't have that many days left until we hit day 300, so there was so much stuff I wanted to get done in such a short amount of time. One of these things was to get a bunch of diamonds, because before 400 days, I would like to have a full diamond beacon. So I wanted to get a head start by getting some diamonds now, so that's what I did between the days 278 and 281. After I did another big mining trip, I combined all my diamonds into diamond blocks and I actually got quite a lot of them. Although I didn't have enough for a full diamond beacon just yet, these would still come in handy later on. For the next few days, I wanted to tick some achievements off the list. Some of these achievements include shooting a crossbow, using a lodestone, craft some netherite farming equipment, fill a lava bucket, and finally, the riskiest one of them all, is to use a totem of undying. I was slightly scared at first, but this is how it went. Yep, just as I thought, it actually worked. But, I still had a spare totem. Now, there was only a matter of days left, and well, for the final few days, I wanted to prove myself for the third time, by not only battling an ender dragon, but also a wither. And I mean, I didn't just want to defeat them separately, I wanted to do it at the exact same time, in the exact same place. Two bosses, one location. So that's when resource gathering started. I needed to get all the wither skeleton skulls and also all of the gas tiers, so I dived into the nether with my looting sword and got to work. Between days 286 and 295, I got surprisingly lucky with not only gas tiers, but also wither heads. It looks like my looting 3 sword is really, really good. Within these days, I was able to get all of the Wither Skulls really quickly. It was at this point where there was only a matter of days before I was face to face with not only the Wither, 
but the Ender Dragon as well. On day 296, I crafted the End Crystals that I would need to resummon the Ender Dragon into the world. For the end of day 296, I spent my time flying over to the End Portal. It was time to prove myself for the third time. As I took a leap into the End Portal, I realized what I was doing. Not only was I about to fight the Wither, but the Ender Dragon at the same time. One wrong move, and everything could be over. I prepared the Wither, and I also prepared the End Crystals. The time was here. I stared up into the sky and saw each obsidian pole summoning itself once again. The Ender Dragon was about to come back. And there it was! The Ender Dragon was in, so I had to quickly spawn the Wither. The challenge had begun. Was I worthy enough to take both of them out at the same time? I felt unstoppable. I was flying around and destroying each individual end crystal. Things were so easy, nothing could stop me at this point. Everything was going amazing, until I looked at the Wither and saw it wasn't interested in me, but it was interested in everything else around it, all of the Endermen and even the Ender Dragon itself. I knew summoning the Wither at the same time as the Ender Dragon was a huge mistake. Not only was the Wither not interested in me, but I couldn't get a hit on it. I tried hitting it with bow shots and everything I could think of, but it just flew away from me each time. And not to mention, it kept regenerating its health. I tried fighting it in the sky, and I even tried jumping off blocks to hit it, but nothing was working. I couldn't quite reach the wither. It was at this point that I realized I was in some serious trouble, and if I was going to escape this, I would just have to focus on the Ender Dragon, because the wither took every single last resource that I had. I thought the only way I could escape the end and get back to my base alive was if I focused the Ender Dragon in the sky, so I dived into the air to take it out. This was a bad idea. A totem had been used and my health was depleting. I had barely any food left, which means no food means no regeneration. I had no second chance. I had the wither flying around going crazy. The only way I could escape was if I was to take out the ender dragon. So I tried focusing it as much as I possibly could. That was in two hours left on two and a half hearts. One hit and everything was over. I was extremely scared but the Ender Dragon only had a small piece of health left, so I was able to get to its tail and finish off the battle. Yet again, another portal was summoned in return for me defeating the Ender Dragon. I got all of the XP, and the third portal that had opened wasn't going to be the only thing that I was going to be exploring in the next 400 days. I'd have to come back and battle the Wither again at some point. But while I could, I decided to get back to my base. It was over. I was away from the Ender Dragon, and I got some rest. It was day 300. I took all of the diamond blocks that I had and started setting up a new beacon. I'm hoping by the end of day 400, I'll be able to complete this diamond beacon. Here it was. Day 300. I was super excited that I had survived yet another 100 days. But now, it was day 301. And like usual, the first thing I decided to do was go check on my cows. I wanted to see if they were doing okay. And well, they were super excited to see me back. But I couldn't help but notice, one of the cows seemed just a little bit unhappy, so I knew what needed to be done here. I obviously needed to build a Christmas tree on the island, a small decoration that would only take a small amount of resources to construct. So that's when I got all of my tools together and went out to collect all the resources I would need. I would only need some basic resources like leaves and some wood, but after I collected all of that, it was time to build this Christmas tree. By day 308, I realized that if I was going to survive another 100 days, that I would need to get some stuff done. And the next project I had in mind was the Enderman farm, which would generate enough Enderman for infinite XP. And infinite XP means infinite enchanting, and at this point in the game, that would be needed. So 
So after clearing out all of my shulker boxes into my storage room, I then began gathering some supplies for the Enemin farm. I would need things like cobblestone, wool, leaves, and a bunch of other stuff that I would spend day 311 creating. I made things like hoppers, ladders, and even some carpets. But I couldn't simply walk into the end and just build this Enemin farm. If you remember from the last 100 days, there was a wither waiting in there for me. I couldn't quite defeat it in the last 100 days, which means that I would have to face it again if I was even going to get close to building this Enderman farm. So that's when I spent day 312 preparing all of the potions and golden apples necessary to defeat the Wither. I couldn't quite get rid of it in the last 100 days, so I knew what I was about to get myself into. The Wither was causing a lot of chaos in the end, and it couldn't go on for any longer. So, because of how risky this fight was about to be, I glanced around my island and said goodbye to my cows, because... It may be the last time I ever get to see them again. The wither was not going to be easy. I checked my inventory one last time to double check I had everything I would need because there would be no second chances in this fight so I needed to get everything correct. As I stood over the end portal I threw my potions down and prepared. It was time to end the chaos this wither was causing. The foolish decision I had to take on this beast had to be done. As I flew over the end and saw the wither I hesitated slightly. I was a bit nervous, I was aware of the damage the wither could deal, but there was no going back now. I swapped my elytras out for my netherite chest plate so I could take some more damage. My first arrow connected with the wither, it was onto me. It was only a matter of time before it would start dealing some melee attacks, so I knew I had to stay fast on my feet and be accurate with my shots. It was too fast for me, and the worst of it all is it could regenerate after every bow shot I hit it with. But I knew if I could get it down to half health, that it would start lunging at me with some melee attacks. And my sword paired with my strength potion, the wither would stand no chance. I dealt some serious damage with my sword attacks. And there it was, with the nether star in my hand I was victorious and I could now build the farm that I so desperately wanted. By day 318, I had fully finished constructing this Enderman farm. I was so excited to get all of the XP because the XP would all be going towards my brand new bow and arrow. My bow and arrow was good, but it wasn't good enough. I wanted to get things like power 5 and infinity as well, so then I wouldn't have to worry about getting arrows anymore. So after some time, I got level 80 and decided it would be best if I head back to my base and start enchanting the bow. I crafted a bunch of different bows and gave them all separate enchants, so then I could combine all of the best bows together, and as a result, I would have a really good bow and arrow in my possession. After combining some bows together and doing some enchanting, I got an Unbreaking 3, Power 5, Infinity Bow. I was very happy with this. But up until day 321, I hadn't done too much building. I had so much creativity, so I decided it would be time to start working on my next build. This would be an armory, a place where I could showcase all of my best stuff, including pickaxes, armor, tools, and even some swords as well. So for the next few days, I decided to get a bunch of resources, including cobblestone, some spruce wood, and even some sand to help make concrete. As the sun was beginning to set, I decided to put all of my shulker boxes down and get ready for this build. But then, something unimaginable happened. Just when I thought I was done with battles, another one emerged in front of my eyes. Pillagers, standing on the top of my storage room. I did want to defeat a raid somewhere in 400 days, but I didn't realize it was going to be this early. As I defended my island from these evil pillagers, I was awaiting the raid's arrival. With villagers directly under my island, the raid was going to begin straight away after I was done battling these foes. After defeating them, I was given a curse, which then proceeded to start a raid. I obviously went down to check all my villagers were okay, and they weren't. They were running around, completely scared, not knowing what to do. I went through all my chests and I had to do some last minute preparation by getting all of my strength potions. It was time to defeat this raid once and for all. I couldn't let them get anywhere near my villages. After drinking a potion, I went to the top of my base and glanced over at an island nearby. They were here. For the first wave of the raid, I was able to keep a good distance and bow and arrow all of the enemies. This was just the beginning. The raid was about to get a whole lot worse. 
And if the raid wasn't already challenging enough, I was doing it during nighttime as well, which means I wouldn't only be facing pillager foes, I would also be facing the dangers of the night, such as zombies, spiders, and even creepers. The second wave of the raid wasn't actually that difficult. I was able to get rid of it pretty quickly, but there was another wave incoming. But this time, it was on my island. And if the raid was able to get down to all my villagers, I would lose every single one of them. And not only that, all the trades I've worked so hard for would be gone. The next wave was inbound, and once again, they were on my island. But this time, there was even more creatures than before. Some of them would require more skill to take out. So for this reason, I got high ground on a tree on my island, and I was able to just bow an arrow down onto the enemies. Even though a raid isn't the best thing to happen, and it's not the easiest thing, I was still happy that it was happening, because I was able to get a bunch of totems of undying as well. But I was hoping later in the raid there would be many more evokers to come, so I could take them out and get even more totems of undying. The only thing I had to make sure was not only me, but also my villagers remained safe during this raid. The time had come, it was now time to face the final wave of the raid, and I really wasn't looking forward to this one. I knew it was going to be the most difficult wave that I've had to face yet. I was able to jump around and deal some critical hits to all of the pillagers, but these were the least of my worries. Things like witches and even ravengers were the things that I was worried about getting to my island. And luckily there was another evoker as well that was trying to head to my island, but I was able to take it out and get another totem of undying in the collection. I was struggling to find the last raider, and I searched absolutely everywhere, but then I went over to a nearby mountain, and found the pillager just standing there. And after taking the final pillager out, I heard this noise. A noise congratulating my success of battling off a raid. After the raid, I went to check on my villagers, and they were super happy to see me because I was actually given Hero of the Village once I defeated the raid, which would mean all of my villagers gave me discounts. But I really wasn't looking to do any trades, so they just chucked cookies and pumpkin pie at me. But I'll take it. And not to mention, that pumpkin pie was pretty nice if I do say so myself. I opened up my shulker box and saw that I now had five totems of undying in total. But now the raid was out of the way, I could finally head back over to doing what I was doing before the raid even started in the first place, and that was building my armory. The armory castle was pretty much complete, there was a few final touches that I wanted to add, like a few item frames around on these tables, which would be placeholders for things like my pickaxes, swords, and tools. I also went out the front of the castle with some leaves and tried to add some extra decoration, just to make things look a little bit nice. I also bone milled the front of it to make it look a little bit more natural, and there it was, fully complete. Although the inside was completely empty, there was no armor stands showcasing armor, and there was no tools, swords, or anything like that inside of the item frame placeholders. So, that's when I decided to go into the creeper farm to get as much gunpowder as I could. The reason I spent a few days gathering all of this gunpowder was to build TNT. If I could construct a bunch of TNT and take it into the nether, I would be able to gather a bunch of ancient debris, to ultimately make netherite so I could then build all of the armor and tools I wanted to showcase in the armory. For day 348, I went into the end to repair my shovels so I could get sand for the TNT as well. And by day 349, I had all my tools up to full durability, so I then headed back home. By day 350, sand gathering for the TNT was well underway. I didn't want to go crazy with TNT in the nether because I already did have some netherite laying around, so I would only need a little bit more if I was going to build all of the stuff that I wanted. I finished off day 350 by collecting the final pieces of sand that I would need, and by day 351, it was time to craft all this TNT. In total, I was able to craft just over 10 and a half stacks of TNT. After creating the TNT, I headed over to my storage room to find that I had 22 netherite ingots, so I would only need just a little bit more if I was going to make all of the stuff that I wanted. To end off day 351, I entered the portal and got ready to go into the depths of the nether for this ancient debris mining trip that I was about to go on. 
After looking around the nether for quite some time, I was able to find the perfect spot for ancient debris. I dug straight down and went to the ancient debris layer, and it was time to place all of this TNT and explode as much as I could. After creating the flint and steel, I mined in hundreds of blocks in one direction to see how far I could go. I attempted to leave one block between each piece of TNT so I can get the most efficient use out of this as possible. And well, after placing all the TNT, it was time to explode all of it. My luck with ancient debris was absolutely insane, I couldn't quite believe it. It was like I couldn't stop finding ancient debris. I spent quite a few days placing and exploding TNT to the point where I was getting so much ancient debris, but I couldn't stop. I still had a bunch of TNT to go, and I was going to make sure I mined every piece of ancient debris I could get my hands on. Oh, and on day 353, I got incredibly lucky. I found two veins of ancient debris directly next to each other. I ended day 353 by exploding the final pieces of TNT I had, and by the start of day 354, I mined the final pieces of ancient debris. And before I knew it, it was day 354. All of the TNT I had was used, and it was time to look in the shulker box and see how much I'd collected. A stack and eight of ancient debris. This was insane. And because I had all of this ancient debris, I couldn't risk staying in the nether any longer. So that's when I decided to head back home and smelt all of the ancient debris. Once it was smelted and turned into netherite scraps, I put it in my crafting table and crafted a bunch of netherite ingots. In total, I got 18 ingots and combined with the 22 I already had, that was 40 netherite ingots in total. More than enough for me to turn a bunch of diamond tools and armor into netherite gear. On day 356, I went on an overworld mining trip getting a bunch of diamonds, not only for all of the armor and tools I needed for the armory, but also because I wanted to get some work done on the diamond beacon. Up until day 359, I basically spent mining, finding loads and loads of diamonds. Throughout day 357, day 358, day 359, I found loads and loads of diamonds. And by day 360, it was time to head back to the base and build all of the diamond armor and diamond tools, swords and pickaxes. These, of course, would all be going in the armory. Oh, and not to mention all of the diamond blocks I was able to build and make some more progress on the diamond beacon on top of the storage room. For day 361, I quickly realized that if I was going to enchant all of these diamond armor and diamond tools, that I would need a bunch of levels to enchant everything. And that's when I decided to get level 100. Yep. That's right, I got 100 XP levels to enchant all of this gear. I spent the other half of day 361 enchanting all of the equipment to max level 30 enchants. And then it was time to transform this all into netherite gear. And with all of the leftover netherite, I was able to make a full block of netherite. This would be used as a nice decoration inside of the armory. So for day 362, I constructed this nice armor showcase area right in the center of the armory. I think it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. Once I had built this, it was time to put all of the gear inside of the placeholders that they had. For the armor, it was the armor stand and for the tools it was the tables with all of the item frames on. I went through and carefully placed everything in the correct item frames. And once I was finished, the armory was fully complete. Before I knew it, it was day 363 and it was time to start on a brand new challenge that I wanted to get done in 400 days and the challenge was to complete all of the hardest advancements the game has to offer. You can tell which ones are the challenging advancements by looking at the border around the symbol and also the purple text describing what had to be done. Here is all of the hardest advancements I was yet to complete and wanted to get done. The first one was to kill a skeleton from at least 50 meters away. The second one was to hit the bullseye on a target block from at least 30 meters away. The next one was to kill one of every hostile monster. For this one, I need to kill two phantoms with a piercing arrow. And the last one in this category was adventuring time, which means I would have to discover every single biome. For the end category, I only had to do one, and that was to levitate up 50 blocks from the attacks of a shulker. Next up, I have to rescue a gas from the nether, bring it safely home to the overworld, and then kill it. Then I have to use the nether to travel seven kilometers in the overworld. And the last one on this category is to have every potion effect applied at the same time. And then to complete the last three, I have to breed all of the animals, tame all cat variants, and finally, eat everything that is edible, even if it's not good for you. The first one I started with was probably one of the easiest ones, and it was to get rid of a skeleton from 50 meters away, so I trapped a skeleton and dug away 50 blocks. I made my way to the end of the path that I had created, and I took my shot at the skeleton. And well, there was the first one ticked off the list. The next one I had to do was to hit a bullseye from at least 30 meters away, and this one is surprisingly difficult, so I came up with a pretty genius plan to get it done. And for this plan to work, I put some leaves right above the target block, and I was going to fire all of the arrows on top of the target block. And then, once I was ready to drop them all down from the decayed leaves, I would set them on fire. Once the final leaf was about to decay, I flew away a bunch of blocks, and there it was. 
a pretty simple trick and I'm pretty proud of myself for this one. The next achievement I wanted to do was to kill every hostile mob and for this I would need to bring some foes from the nether into the overworld so I collected a bunch of obsidian because not only would I need the obsidian for this advancement there was some advancements that I had to do in the future that required a bunch of obsidian so I played it safe and got about a stack and when I was going into the nether to get this advancement done there was a cat on the other side of the portal which was um confusing but it was pretty cool. The first hostile mob I had to get rid of was a hoglin so I brought it in the overworld and it turned into this dangerous creature I hadn't seen before so I got rid of it and did the same thing for a piglin. Another hostile mob I hadn't taken care of yet was the endermite but that was pretty easy. Only leaving me two left, the stray which I found in an ice biome and then a slime which was bouncing around in a cave so I got rid of it and the achievement was done. Monsters Hunted was complete. It was time to move on to the next advancement. The next advancement I wanted to do was arguably one of the hardest advancements there is, and that's to discover every biome the game has to offer. And seeing as there's a bunch, I decided that I would get all my potatoes ready to go and sell so I could get another unbreaking book and another mending book to put on my spare pair of elytras. So that way I could fly across the lands of my world and not have to worry too much about running out of elytra durability, because now I would have two. Once I had placed the enchantments up on the elytras, I dived into the creeper farm for a few days to get some gunpowder for fireworks. And once I was done with that, I had a lot of gunpowder that I I then turned into fireworks and I was ready to set flight across my world to find all of the biomes. I adventured upon some amazing biomes. And I even found my first jungle. Seeing as I was flying around for absolutely ages, I come across most of these biomes without even realizing. And the final one I had to do was this one with really tall trees. And once I flew within the radius, I had completed the adventuring time challenge. 42 biomes out of 42 biomes discovered. I couldn't quite believe it. But to get back home, I realized I could use a nether portal with all the obsidian I had with me. And I could also get another achievement done by doing this. By traveling through the portal, I was able to get another challenge complete. And this one was the subspace bubble advancement. Next up, I wanted to breed all of the animals in the game. I'd only done two of these and it was going to take a while. So I got a fishing rod, enchanted it so I could get some fish. Because, well, fish would be needed to breed animals such as cats and also ocelots. The first animals I ticked off the list were bees. Then dogs. Then sheep. Then horses and then pigs. And then after I breeded chickens, things started to get more challenging. I needed to start breeding things like horses and donkeys, and also just donkeys, and even llamas, which required a hay bale, which was quite unusual. Between days 376 and 385, I dived over to all of the other biomes I had previously visited for the discovering achievement. In the jungle biome, I found things like pandas and also ocelots, so I was able to tick those off the list as well. I also came across some foxes, and I used some sweet berries to breed these guys together. Also, not to mention, there's another advancement where if you can tame all different types of cats together, you get the achievement unlocked. So, any village I came across, I was always trying to tame these. Finding each of the different cats was pretty easy, and after breeding together some rabbits, I was able to find the two last cats I needed. The last cat I found here, I didn't want it to run away and mess up my chances of completing this achievement, so I was very careful, and after feeding it some fish, I got this achievement done. I mean, this achievement was actually pretty easy. After doing the cat achievement, I got back to breeding together all of the animals. So I went into a mushroom biome to breed together some mushrooms. After breeding the mushroom cows, I then headed into the nether to do the final two, which was the striders, which were pretty easy to get breeding, and also hoglings, which were surprisingly difficult to breed together. But anyway, after stumbling across the nether and getting them breeded finally, I'd completed that challenge as well. Now, I was close to completing all of the hardest advancements, but not close enough. So for day 386, I attempted to complete the advancement where I needed to bring a ghast into the overworld and then successfully get rid of it. So that's when I constructed two gigantic portals and started my journey of trying to get these gas inside. And this one was not the easiest thing. But by day 388, a gas spawned nearby and I was able to take it in. I went through the portal just to see the gas flying around in the sky. I was super happy to see this. After getting rid of it and completing this advancement, it was finished. One of the hardest advancements done within the space of three days. For day 389, I wanted to complete the two birds, one arrow achievement. So I enchanted a crossbow and got piercing pretty quickly. And on the night of day 389, I got incredibly lucky. 
By day 390, I only had a few advancements left to complete, and one of them was to eat every single food in the game, even if it was to harm me. So I waited until I was pretty hungry and got to work on this achievement. I feasted on rotten flesh, puffer fish, and poisonous potato, when combined gave me some serious effects. Raw rabbit, cooked salmon, cooked mutton, sweet berries, beetroot soup, raw chicken, raw beef, beetroot, chorus fruit, I had to be careful when I was eating this one, raw salmon, melon, a cookie, dried kelp, tropical fish, a spider eye, suspicious stew, cooked rabbit, cooked pork chop, raw fish, cooked chicken, steak, rabbit stew, golden carrot, raw pork chop, raw mutton, cooked fish, mushroom stew in a honey bottle, and after feasting on all of these different types of food, it was down to one last food that I needed to complete, and this happened to be the enchanted golden apple. I only had one of these and I really didn't want to eat it, but I had to get it done if I wanted to complete all of the hardest advancements the game had to offer. I took it out the item frame. I carefully held it in my hand. And I began eating. A balanced diet complete. I couldn't believe it. All of the hardest achievements were pretty much done, which only left me two more advancements to do. And these ones were pretty easy. In fact, one of them was so easy I went into the end. Constructed a giant pole out of cobblestone in a nearby end city. And once I was hit with the levitation effect, I ender pulled up to the top of this pole, which gave me one of the easiest achievements there was. The great view from up here advancement. To end off day 391, I headed back to my base and got some sleep for the next day, where I would complete the final challenge. And this one would be a furious cocktail, which means I would have to have every single potion effect on at the exact same time. I spent day 392 brewing up all of the potions, and I was ready to get it done. Having every potion effect applied at the same time was the last advancement I had out of all of the difficult ones the game had to offer. But I knew it could be dangerous. One of these potions were poison potions, meaning that if a mob was to come along and deal some damage to me, I'd be out the game. It was time to start drinking the potions, and when I got down to the final few... I'd completed it. A furious cocktail. This was every single of Minecraft's hardest advancements in the game. I did it! I successfully completed all of the hardest advancements in Minecraft. I will save the easy ones for 500 days. And yes, I know there is one more secret advancement, but I will save that for 500 days. After drinking some milk, I felt way better and began construction on one final thing I wanted to do before 400 days was over. And this was a bridge, connecting my island to the main land. The bridge looked great, but it was coming to the end of 400 days, and I knew that I needed to prove myself once again, and I had to do this by defeating the Ender Dragon for the fourth time. And if I was to do this, another portal would be unlocked into an end city. Now it was time to dive into the depths of the nether to get all of the gas tiers to construct these end crystals. It was time to prove myself once again. As I went through the portal, I stumbled upon a few ghasts, and ghasts dropped gas tears, which is what I actually needed to build the end crystals. And after I had all of these, I could re-summon the ender dragon once again. Once I collected all of the gas tears I would need, I then went back to my base and started making the end crystals. And before I knew it, I was stood over the end portal once again. It was time to prove myself for the fourth time, and get that fourth portal opened into the end city. I calmly walked into the end and placed down each individual end crystal. It was almost time to meet with the dragon once again. I saw each obsidian pole summon itself in front of my eyes. I was just waiting for the dragon to arrive. It was here, but with my elytras and my power 5 bow, the dragon would stand almost no chance. I managed to fly around and take out each end crystal one by one. Without these, the ender dragon couldn't regenerate its health. But with the elytras, the end crystals were easy to take out, and then it was just me against the dragon. With a few perfectly timed bow and arrow shots, I was able to get the ender dragon in midair. And then, I saw it disintegrate in front of my eyes for the fourth time. I was victorious, and I had proved myself once again. Oh, and let's not forget about the fourth portal that was opened, as a reward for me getting rid of the Ender Dragon once again. 
With a smile on my face, I collected all of the XP and dived straight into the portal. I was home, and more importantly, free from the Ender Dragon. Here it was. Day 400. I couldn't believe that I had made it to day 400, so for day 401, I said hi to my cows yet again. They were super happy to see me back. As I left the cows home, I glanced over at two builds I'd previously constructed. They were outdated and needed to be replaced by something new. This would be a statue, a small yet detailed build that I could create with some easy materials I had in my storage room. I looked through my chest to find some supplies that I would need to build this statue, such as cobblestone, cobblestone stairs, and even some stone bricks. Some other things I wanted for this build were things such as prismarine blocks and some sea lanterns, but as I was looking through my chests, I saw the lack of prismarine shards I had. So that's when I decided to head over to my creeper farm to make some fireworks so I could go over and explore the nearby ocean monument. I arrived at the ocean monument just as the sun was setting and didn't bring any potions with me but that would be okay seeing as I wouldn't be here for long and I had some doors to create some air pockets. I spent some time gathering all the blocks I would need and even brought my silk touch pickaxe to get some of these sea lanterns. But once I was done with resource gathering, construction started. <laughs> With the statue on the island built, it was time to move on to my next project, and this would be an iron farm. An infinite supply of iron, which would lead to me not needing to get iron on any mining trips in the future. I spent day 405 gathering all of the components I would need for this farm. I would need things such as composters, hoppers, chests, fence gates, and also some beds, so I went out to get some sheep. I also filled up a shulker box with dirt. This would be needed for the island extension itself that would hold the iron farm. By the middle of day 405, I was able to start creating this farm. By day 407, the farm was so close to being done. All I would need now is to get some villagers over to it, and even a zombie. These things would be needed so the farm could function correctly. I struggled to get villagers out my villager area just because there were so many iron golems blocking the exit. So I knew what needed to be done here. I needed to spend some time clearing this place out. By the end of day 408, the villager area was completely cleared out and I could now finally take the villagers all into their brand new home. Although, when I was pushing the villagers into their brand new house, one of the villagers reminded me that I have to tell you guys something and, well, I now have a second channel. So if you enjoy the content here, then I'm sure you'll enjoy the content over there. The channel name is called More Fru, and it would mean a lot to me if you were to go and check it out or maybe even subscribe. I will put the channel down below in the description, so if you want to go check it out, that would be awesome. But anyway, back to building the iron farm. On the night of day 409, I had to add some final touches to the iron farm so it would work correctly, and then after that, I had to lead a zombie into its brand new home. The first zombie I decided to trap wasn't really the happiest with this, so it decided to run away, which means I needed to get a new one. So I got a fresh name tag. As soon as night struck, I led another zombie over to this position, and it was time to see if this farm truly worked. I was interested to see not only the farm's efficiency, but if it would actually work, so I spent the next few days testing it out. As soon as it hit day 414, I went to see how much iron this farm had generated and couldn't believe my eyes. I had pretty much four stacks of iron and didn't have to mine a single piece of it. With iron in my inventory and a smile on my face, it was time to go on a brand new adventure. I wanted to see if I could get my hands on a trident. I know how rare these are, but I really wanted one. As I was flying over the seas and enjoying my adventure, I saw some sort of underwater decayed structure which contained a chest. I went down to investigate and open up the chest to see what would be waiting for me, and I found a buried treasure map. I was super excited and couldn't wait any longer to see what was on this map, so I decided to go over to a nearby mountain and inspect. As I got onto dry land, I gripped the map in my hands to take a look at where I would need to go next. Turns out I was way more close than I expected, so without hesitation, I went straight over to where I needed to be. It brought me over to a small deserted island, but I knew somewhere under here there would be a chest filled with loot. I stood in the correct spot and started digging down. I had instantly found what I was looking for. I couldn't wait to see the treasures waiting for me inside of this chest. When I opened it up, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. A whole chest filled with gold, emeralds, iron, and more importantly, a heart of the sea. I knew just how valuable this item was, so I put it safely in my inventory. 
With my adventure off to a great start, it was time to dive into the ocean to see if I could find a drowned holding a trident. These aren't easy to come by, and I knew diving into the ocean and starting battles against some foes I hadn't encountered before was going to be dangerous. So I stayed cautious at all times. On day 417, I came across a trident drowned, but it unfortunately didn't drop it. And, well, the same thing happened multiple times. But on day 418, I locked eyes with another drowned holding a trident. It was time to dive down with my looting sword and see if I could get lucky. And to my surprise, it dropped straight into the ocean. After all of this searching, I finally had one. And, well, of course, now I had this trident, I had to make sure I had all of the best enchants it could get. I started off by placing it in an enchantment table and only getting on breaking three, so I decided to try again, and I settled for this. And I'm breaking three and loyalty three trident, which wasn't too bad, and loyalty was really the only enchantment I wanted. Apart from mending, of course, so I bought a book from my villagers. I combined my book with my trident, and it was time to head over to my XP farm. The durability was surprisingly low on the trident. With a full durable trident in my hands, it was time to test this thing. Seeing as it had loyalty, there was no chance it could possibly get lost and would come back to me by any means. I hope. It will be back any minute, I hope. Wait, wait a minute. It seems I had made a mistake. I decided to chuck the trident into the void, which means it wouldn't come back to me. All of that hard work for nothing. How clumsy. So, to end off day 420, I went out looking for some more drowns to see if I could get lucky, and to my surprise, I got the luckiest I think I possibly could have. I got a trident back in no time. Again, I brought this trident back over to my enchantment table and got even better enchants. And of course, I bought another mending book, and seeing as this one already had good durability, I wouldn't be risking bringing it to the end again. And there it was. To end off day 422, I had a trident in my possession. And of course, seeing as I now had the trident, I had to try it out. On day 423, I had so much creativity, and it was time to start on a brand new building project. But this building project would be located in the depths of the nether. The only build I had in the nether was this small cobblestone structure which surrounded my nether portal just so it wouldn't break. But it wasn't good enough and I wanted an upgrade. So I spent the next few days gathering things like quartz for smooth quartz blocks and even had to take a trip back over to the armory to get a silk touch pickaxe. This would be so I could obtain some sea lanterns for the build. Another key block I was using for this build was light blue concrete. This would simply be to make the nether base stand out. Now that I had collected all of the resources and materials I would need for this build, it was time to start it. By the end of day 433, the build was fully up and constructed. It was time to grab some obsidian so I could make a large nether portal in the base. And there it was, a full lit nether portal and a massive safety hub, so anytime I would enter the nether, I knew I'd be safe. And if you remember from the last 100 days, I was able to take out another wither and get a spare nether star which I could use to create a beacon. And well, I thought a beacon would go perfectly inside of this brand new build. After setting up the beacon, the nether base was fully constructed. I now had a safe place to go in the nether. I was also pretty proud with this build and thought it looked quite nice if I do say so myself. As I got back into the overworld, I thought now was the perfect time to get one of my goals ticked off the list, and this was to complete the full diamond beacon. Seeing as I had quite a lot of progress towards the diamond beacon, I thought now would be the perfect time to finish it, and it would probably only take me around about 20 days max. I created a light blue shulker box, and this is where I would store all of the diamonds. And of course, an overworld mining trip called for a visit to the armory to get a spare pickaxe. This pickaxe would simply be a spare pickaxe if anything was to go wrong with my main one, but seeing as it had mending, that was unlikely. By day 437, I was down in the depths of the caves mining for diamonds. Seeing as I would be down in the caves for quite some time, I brought plenty of food and I was prepared to spend as much time as I needed down here. After all, I knew the diamond beacon wouldn't be easy. On day 438, I was getting so lucky with diamonds, it was like I couldn't stop finding them. And even on day 339, I was making amazing progress. But on day 440, I came across a cave filled with hostile foes. 
but I was able to take care of them and came across even more diamonds. I spent day 441 all the way to day 457 mining for diamonds constantly. Although it was amazing having all of these valuables on me, I had to be careful because I didn't want to lose any of it. After mining loads and loads and loads of diamonds, it was time to see how many I had obtained. By day 458, I checked my inventory and I was loaded with diamonds, and if my calculations were correct, I would only need around about 13 stacks of diamonds to complete this beacon. And on day 459, it was done. All 13 stacks obtained and in my inventory, and it was time to get out of the caves. By day 460 I was finally back on land and I hadn't seen the sky in many many days. This felt great. And seeing as I was exhausted after countless days of mining, I got some sleep. And on day 461, it was time to finally build this beacon. I truly couldn't believe my eyes, I had so many diamond blocks. I instantly went to the top of my storage room and placed them all down. And there it was, I finally had what I've wanted for so long, a full, complete diamond beacon. I felt super achieved, but I didn't actually have a beacon to put on the top. Which could only mean one thing, I had to take out some wither skeletons to get some wither skulls to summon another wither to get another nether star. But I didn't want to only battle one wither, I wanted to battle two at the same time. So then I wouldn't only have one beacon, I would have a spare one in my disposal to use at any time. So seeing as I wanted these beacons, I would need some wither heads, so I went directly over to the fortress and started battling withers to see if I could get lucky. On day 462, I got lucky with my first wither head and was able to get a second one as well. On day 463, I was able to get another one in the collection. I continued to battle wither skeletons with my sword and on day 464, I came across two wither skeleton skulls and got incredibly lucky. And well, on day 465, I got the final wither skull I was looking for, which now means it was time to battle these two withers. But I couldn't do this without some preparation, so I went back to my base and grabbed some soul sand and everything else I would need to prepare for this. Such as golden apples and even some strength potions, so I went directly to my storage room to grab some water bottles. I placed each individual water bottle into the brewing stand and started making up some strength potions. These potions would be super useful because it would give me some more attacking power against the withers. But when I was done brewing the potions, I realized something. Defeating two withers is definitely not going to be easy, so I gave one last glance around my island because it may be the last time I would see it again. And of course, I said goodbye to my cows and instantly went down to the strip mine so I could prepare for this wither fight. I was feeling nervous, but super prepared at the same time. With all of my potions and golden apple, I felt unstoppable. I put the soul sand in its place and equipped my chest plate so I could absorb some more damage from these withers. Taking attacks from two of these will do some serious damage to me, so I would need to stay cautious at all times. I placed the wither heads on the soul sand blocks and I got ready to spawn these beasts in. Everything was beginning to seem real, so I hesitated no longer and placed the last two wither skulls on top of the soul sand blocks, and the withers were here. It was time to prepare my bow and arrow and get ready for the most intense battle I've had up to this point. Here it was, with both of the withers spawned in, I had to start attacking instantly, because if I was to let any of the withers get above ground, they would destroy my island and everything I had worked hard for up to this point. So I tried my best to make sure both of the withers would stay underground and do everything I could to keep them from getting into the overworld. With some quick melee attacks, I was able to do chunks of damage to the first wither. With my strength 2 potion paired with my sword, the wither would stand no chance. With some accurate sword attacks, I was able to take the first wither down, which then left me with one more. I got this beast's attention and stumbled back into my pathway. I attempted the same tactic I had with the last wither and threw some bow shots at it. These attacks were dealing some serious damage and before I knew it I had this wither down to about half health. Seeing as I got it low, I knew it would start lunging at me with some melee attacks. I had to keep my distance and time my shots perfectly. With one final swing, the wither was gone. I had done it. I was able to take out two withers and get two nether stars. This means I could now create two beacons. One for the diamond beacon, and one that I could keep spare for a future use. I was hungry, so I eaten some potatoes and gripped the nether star in my hands. I felt victorious. 
another battle that I had won. By day 467, I made it safely back to my base and grabbed some obsidian and glass. It was time to craft both of these beacons. I went back over to my storage room, and there it was. I had fully constructed an entire diamond beacon, and it looked pretty incredible if I do say so myself. But this diamond beacon had taken me ages to get, so I couldn't just leave it on top of a storage room. I had to show this thing off. So that's when I started to get some materials to build a placeholder for this beacon. I really liked the armory castle design that I had made in 400 days and wanted to make something similar for a beacon room. So seeing as this is what I would be building, I went to see what blocks I already had at my disposal for this build. I had some blocks laying around like stone brick, cobblestone and even some smooth andesite. Oh, and when I was getting the blocks for this build, I came across an empty map I had spare in one of my end chests. I activated the map and got a whole view of the island. Now I know exactly where I could put this map. Perfect. There was also some other preparations I had to make for this build, and some of that would be concrete, so I got to work and mined as much of that as I could. I also spent some time crafting up some light blue glass, and also getting some final pieces of cobblestone that I would need. And, well, once I was done gathering all of the materials for this build, construction started. <laughs> By day 473, the beacon room was so close to being finished. All I had to do was go through and add some final touches, such as some bone meal around the area, and also added some leaves for extra decoration. Once that was done, I could go onto the top of the storage room and start moving the diamond beacon over. When I had all of the diamond blocks in my inventory, I moved them all over to the brand new beacon room. And there it was, the full diamond beacon inside of the brand new diamond beacon room. This looks pretty good if I do say so myself. I then placed my shulker box filled with valuables down and got a piece of netherite out. This would be used to power the diamond beacon. And by day 474, the Beacon Castle was fully constructed. With the Beacon Castle constructed and quite a lot of days left, I knew what needed to be done. It was time to finish every last advancement the game had to offer. And that even includes one of the secret advancements as well. I made my way back down to my base to check exactly what advancements I had left to do. The first one was to strike a villager with lightning. The second one was to summon an iron golem to help defend a village. The third one was to jump into a honey block to break your fall. The fourth one I had to complete was to give a pillager a taste of their own medicine. Next on the list, I had to charge a respawn anchor to the maximum. And also ride a strider with a warped fungus on a stick. And then, on the next category, I had to use a campfire to collect honey from a beehive using a bottle without aggravating the bees. I then have to catch a fish without a fishing rod, and the final one on this category is to move a bee nest with three bees inside using silk touch. And well, the final one is to weaken and then cure a zombie villager. And then of course, I also wanted to tick one of the two secret achievements off the list as well. So after some quick farming, I got straight to work with the first achievement I wanted to tick off the list, and this would be to cure a zombie villager, and for this I would need some splash potions of weakness, and also a golden apple. I then proceeded to make my way over to the closest village and find a villager and trap them in with a zombie. Once that was done, the villager was now a zombie. Then once the zombie villager was following me, I struck down my weakness potion and fed it my golden apple. And well, after some time passed, I got the advancement, the zombie doctor. The second advancement was really easy and all I had to do was pick up a fish in a bucket. The next advancement was another simple one and all I had to do was take out a pillager with a crossbow. I then had to wait multiple days for a thunderstorm so I could strike a villager with lightning. This advancement was quite easy but I had to have some fun so I made a charge creeper and got instantly scared. 
After taking out the charge creeper, it was time to move on to the next advancement, and this was to simply make an iron golem. For the next advancement, I had to go into the depths of the nether to actually ride on one of the striders, but I also needed to lead it in a direction with a warped fungus on a stick. This next advancement called for a trip over to the armory. Some of these advancements needed me to get some beehives, so I went ahead and got my silk touch pickaxe and headed into the forest. Once I collected a beehive, I then made a respawn anchor to get another easy achievement ticked off the list. For this, all I needed to do was charge it up to the maximum amount. It was now time to build the bees a home. Seeing as a lot of these advancements I hadn't done required bees, I knew this would be what I needed next. Seeing as these bees finally had their new home, I decided to start getting the advancements instantly. The first one I would need to do is harvest some honey from the hive without getting them angry at me, and the other advancement required me to silk touch one of their bee nests with three bees in. Now, with all of the simple achievements nearly done, it was time to move on to the secret advancement, and for this, I would need a piercing four crossbow. So I went ahead, enchanted one of the crossbows, and it was time to get to work. For this secret achievement, I would have to get rid of five mobs with one single piercing arrow. This was going to be extremely hard, but I had a plan. I started by getting some of the easiest animals I could think of, a sheep, a pig, a cow, and even a chicken. I would then have to lead all of the animals down into a one block hole so they would all be together so the piercing arrow would hit every single one of them. And well, for the fifth mob, I came up with the genius idea of using a snow golem. Seeing as this is a secret achievement, I didn't want to mess it up. All the preparation up to this point was extremely hard, so I needed to make sure it would work. I threw the poison potion down, and it was time to see if this would work. There it was, the arbalistic achievement ticked off the list. This was the first secret achievement I had done, and with all of the preparation I put into it, I was extremely happy to get it done first try. And yes, I know there is one more secret achievement, but I will be saving this for 600 days. After finishing the arbalistic advancement, there was only one more I had to do, and that was just to simply slide down a honey block. And once this was done, I had completed every advancement that was visible. Once I was done with all of the advancements, I noticed how the bees really enjoyed being around my island, so I wanted to give them a better home. So after gathering some basic resources such as wood and leaves, I got started on constructing the bees brand new home. <laughs> The bees had a base right next to the island, but seeing as I didn't have too many days left, I had to prove myself once again by defeating the Ender Dragon. For me to summon the Ender Dragon once again, I had to head into the depths of the nether to see if I could get lucky with some gas tears. The gas tears would allow me to create end crystals, which would allow me to respawn the Ender Dragon in once again. And well, after spending some time in the nether, I was able to get all of the gas tears I needed. Now, all there was left for me to do is prepare the final things I would need, such as some fireworks, some eyes of Ender, and once I had these, I was able to construct what I needed. The End Crystals. I then made my way over to the stronghold and glanced into the portal. It was time to prove myself once again. I carefully placed each End Crystal exactly where it needed to be. Each obsidian pole summoned itself once again. All I needed to do now was await the Ender Dragon's arrival. The dragon had been summoned, it was time to take this thing out, but with my elytras paired with my bow, it would stand almost no chance. I went up into the air and landed some accurate bow shots. Without these, the ender dragon wouldn't be able to regenerate any extra health. I had dealt with almost every single end crystal, I was now left with the two end crystals inside of the cages. Now with these being taken out, the Ender Dragon wouldn't be able to regenerate its health. I tried to be fast in the air and accurate with my shots. I 
I even landed some critical trident hits. But unfortunately, my trident was lost in battle. The Ender Dragon landed in the center, and it was time to unleash some sword attacks. I now had the Ender Dragon at some serious low health. It would only take a matter of bow shots before this battle was over. I had done it. I had proved myself against the Ender Dragon once again. But not only that, another End City portal was opened in return for me beating this Ender Dragon. I collected the XP and got safely back home. I was home, but more importantly, safe from the Ender Dragon. It was now day 500. I couldn't believe that I had survived 500 days and, well, I knew exactly what I wanted to do for day 501. It was time to work on some projects. The first project I had in mind was an area where I could store not only my shulker boxes, but also my brewing stands as well. Having them all in the same room was just taking up too much space and they needed to move. So for this base extension, I would need some building resources. I began by looking for some materials in my chests. I did want this extension to be some sort of secret room, so I knew some redstone would be needed here. Now, although I had a lot of resources inside of my chests for this build, it simply wasn't enough. I needed to go out and get some things like clay and even some concrete as well. But now this was done, I was able to make some redstone components to start on a redstone door. This would be used as a secret access point into the new build. The redstone door that I was making here really wasn't that technical and only required minimal redstone. So after some testing, the redstone door was fully functional, which could now only mean one thing. It was now time to begin construction. By day 507, the build was completely done, and my shulker boxes and also brewing stands had now moved. Here it was, the modern extension onto the base was done, and it looked pretty nice if I do say so myself. I had not only managed to make an efficient shulker box and brewing stand area, but I also had a place to store my crossbow. Seeing as I now had this base extension all up and constructed, it was time to move on to my next project. And this would be an automatic sugarcane farm. Which means if I was to have an automatic sugarcane farm, this would work perfectly with my creeper farm. Because paper combined with gunpowder makes fireworks, which ultimately means I would have an infinite source of fireworks. So by the middle of day 507, I went out resource gathering. And I was able to pick up a bunch of spruce wood, and also a bunch of sand. By day 508, I was able to return back to the base and craft some final things I would need for this farm. Once this was done, I had crafted all the components necessary. And on the beginning of day 509, it was time to build this thing. Before I knew it, it was day 513, and my automatic sugarcane farm was fully functional. Now all I wanted to do was test this farm out, I wanted to see just how efficient this thing could be. After a day of testing out this automatic sugarcane farm, I went over to the chest to see just how much sugarcane it had generated. And, well, when I opened up the chest, I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. There was over a stack of sugarcane in there, which gave me a genius idea. I could craft all of this sugarcane into paper and combine it with gunpowder, which would give me some fireworks. And wow, with all of these fireworks, I could now go on a new adventure, and I knew just what I wanted to do. The adventure that I wanted to go on was unlike any adventure I'd been on before. Because, well, if you remember from the last 100 days, I'd completed every advancement in the game, apart from one secret advancement called How Did We Get Here? Now this is the hardest challenge Minecraft has to offer, and I wanted to take it on. I knew just how hard the How Did We Get Here advancement was going to be, so some planning was going to be necessary. To complete this advancement, I would need every effect the game has to offer all active at one time. So not only would I need to get effects from things like potions and foods, but also things like Hero of the Village from a raid, Bad Omen from a Pillager Tower, Mining Fatigue from an Ocean Monument, and also Levitation from a Shulker. So on day 516, I set out on an adventure. I needed to try and find a Pillager Tower close to a village, so that way I could get Hero of the Village and also bad omen pretty quickly. And well, on the middle of day 516, I got incredibly lucky and found a pillager tower. Now that I had found this to give me bad omen, I just needed to find a village. But as I was flying over the ocean nearby to this pillager tower, I found an ocean monument, which was perfect. 
so not only would I be able to get mining fatigue, but also bad omen extremely quickly. Finding an ocean monument so close to a pillager tower was extremely rare, so to find a village nearby would be almost impossible. Or would it? I didn't quite think I could get any more luckier than finding an ocean monument right next to a pillager tower. That was until I flew over and found a village extremely close. I'd found all three structures, a village for hero of the village, a pillager tower for bad omen, and an ocean monument for mining fatigue. Things were going great. But seeing as the locations of these structures were quite far away from my main base, I would need a faster way to transport between my base and this area with the structures. I decided to make a portal at this location and create a huge pathway back to the portal that will bring me to my base. That way when I'm ready to do the how did we get here advancement, I would simply need to get the effects, go through the portal, run through this tunnel and go back to my base. By day 519, I decided it was time to tick off another effect on the list, and this would be Levitation. You can only obtain the Levitation effect from a Shulker, so I would need to bring one all the way from the end into the overworld. This was going to be extremely time consuming, and I would also need a bunch of blocks as well. On day 520, I glanced into the end portal and dived straight in without any hesitation. It was time to bring a Shulker into the overworld. As soon as I stepped foot into the end, I had to do some preparations to assure safety for the Shulker when it was to come through this portal. The first thing I did was construct a safety platform for the Shulker. And once this was done, I made a staircase all the way down into the center portal so I could bring the Shulker back into the overworld. The next step I had to do to make sure the Shulker would go back into the overworld was by spawn-proofing the center portal in the end. By spawn-proofing this ground, I can be sure that the Shulker will have no other option apart from to go into the center portal. By day 521, all of the preparation was done and I was ready to get a Shulker and bring it back into the overworld. So I dived straight into the end city portal and began looking for an end city. And on day 522, I got extremely lucky and was able to find an end city, and it was also unlooted, which was another bonus. Because not only would there be chests filled with goodies, but there would also be a spare elytra. Once I had looted the elytras from the ship, it was time to start using all of my building blocks to build a massive pathway to the end city to get a shulker. This was pretty time consuming and I was able to get it done within a few days. I then broke my way into the end city and was able to get a shulker in my boat. The shulker seemed extremely excited to head into the overworld so it got into my boat and we headed over to the end portal. Whilst I was bringing the shulker over this pathway there was an extreme amount of endermen in the way which made this process even more time consuming. By day 530 I was able to bring the shulker back through the end city portal and straight to the middle of the end. This way I could break the boat and then use a piston to push it into the overworld. At this point, everything was going much easier than I expected, and so I went through the portal to find the Shulker in the overworld. It took me a little while to find the Shulker, but eventually I found it in the ocean. I found it just in time and was able to put it in my boat. Once the Shulker was in the boat, I headed over to where I was going to complete this advancement. I mean, just look at the Shulker. It really enjoyed being in the boat, and it couldn't wait to help me out with this advancement. Everything was going great. That was all until the Shulker began taking damage. I didn't know what to do, and I didn't think there was any way I could save it. And, unfortunately, the Shulker disappeared, which means I would have to go back and get a new one. But, I mean, it really wasn't that big of a deal, because I was able to find another Shulker in the exact same room where I found the last one, and I could just simply bring this one back to my base. Seeing as I had already set up the pathways for the Shulker before, bringing this one back was extremely easy and I took it to the location where I was going to do this advancement. Now that I had this Shulker in the overworld, the rest of the advancement preparation was pretty easy. The next effect that I had to work on was the Wither effect, and well to do this, I would need to get myself a Wither Rose and the only way you can get these is if a Wither is to take out another mob. But the thing is I didn't have any Wither Skeleton Skulls so I couldn't summon another Wither, which means I would have to head into the depths of the Nether. By day 532, I was in the depths of the nether. I immediately stormed into the fortress and began battling some wither skeletons. On day 533, I was able to pick up my first wither skeleton skull. And on day 534, I couldn't quite believe my luck. I was able to obtain two wither skeleton skulls. It was almost like they didn't want to stop dropping them. Once I had three skeleton skulls obtained, I knew what needed to be done next. I headed into the wilderness to try and find some animals. I would need the wither to take these out so I could ultimately obtain what I was looking for. And this was the wither rose. I took all of the animals where they needed to be, and it was time to summon the wither. The 
Squid was here, it was time to battle, but more importantly, I needed to make sure it would take out all of these animals so I can get the Wither Roses. Once I was confident that the animals had dropped Wither Roses, it was time to battle. My accurate bow shots paired with my strength potion was just too strong for the Wither, and it would stand no chance. Once I had got the Wither down to half health, it was time to go in with some melee attacks. And these were doing chunks of damage. And after one final swing of my sword, the fight was over, and I glanced around and saw the Wither Roses on the ground. This is exactly what I needed. And let's also not forget about the Nether Star that I obtained from this battle. I could use this to craft another beacon down the line. The Wither Battle was now done, and I had collected exactly what I needed. So now it was time to head down into the secret area of my base and begin brewing up the potions I would need for this advancement. Most of the effects that I needed to do for this advancement were pretty much obtained through potions. By day 538, I had brewed up all of the potions I needed, and I made them in the form of splash potions so they would be easier to use. The next thing I needed to make was Suspicious Stew. This would grant me with blindness and, well, it was pretty much the only way I would be able to get this effect. At this point, all of the preparation for this advancement was basically done and I would only need to set up a few more things like the Conduit, which would grant me Conduit power. I would then need a Dolphin for Dolphin's Grace and give it a name tag so it wouldn't despawn. I then put the Wither Rose in place so I could get the Wither effect and gave the contraption a little test. Just to make sure it was working okay. I then set up a dispenser and put some spectral arrows inside. The spectral arrows would be needed to grant me with the glowing effect. And while seeing as I need every effect to complete this advancement, I would obviously need this. I then made my way over to the Diamond Beacon Castle because I would need to borrow this beacon. I would not only need one beacon for resistance, but also another one from haste. So I set up one small beacon for haste, and then the diamond beacon so I could get resistance. At this point, all of the preparation was done. It was time to do this advancement for real. I started to get nervous and everything was beginning to seem real. I had done so much preparation up until this point, and I knew by making one mistake I could mess this whole thing up. And not only that, this advancement is extremely risky. Not only do I have to fight a raid, but I also have to use every potion in the game. And this includes the poison potion, meaning if a skeleton or any other mobs nearby while I'm doing this advancement, one mob attacking me could end this whole thing. This was about to be the most risky thing I had done up to this point, but I couldn't hesitate any longer. I dived into the depths of the nether, and I got over to the portal as fast as I could. I began by flying over to the pillager tower and taking out the captain. This would then grant me with bad omen so I could head over to the village and start a raid. The reason I needed to defeat this raid was to get granted the hero of the village effect. The raid was here, but lucky for me I was able to take high ground and get some accurate bow shots on the enemies. The first round was pretty easy, but everything was going to get more difficult from this point onwards. More enemy foes were here. I needed to stay alert. By day 541, I was a few waves into the raid, and I got sabotaged and cornered by multiple enemy foes, leaving me on one heart. Luckily for me, I was able to fly away, but if I didn't react as fast as I did, my totem and dying would have been used. Not long into day 541, there was only two witches that remained in the raid. I was able to take them out, and before I knew it, it was time to move on to the next step of this advancement. And that was to go back to the pillager tower and get Bad Omen. But I had made one mistake. I remembered that under my base I have villagers, so if I was to go back through the portal and go into my base, another raid would be activated due to me having Bad Omen. So I had to make a portal really far away from my base and break the main one, so that way when I'm to come back to my base, it would spawn me really high up so I would be far enough from my villagers to not start a raid. Once that was done, I went back over to the pillager tower and got the bad omen effect. I was now left with only one more effect to get out here, and that was mining fatigue. But the thing is about mining fatigue, it has a five minute timer, meaning that when I was to get it, the rest of this advancement would be on an extreme time limit, so nothing could go wrong from this point onwards. I was given the curse of mining fatigue and headed back to the portal. It was time to do this advancement for real. I made my way through the portal and flew as fast as I could back home. Like planned, I was extremely high up in the sky, and I was able to fly over to the contraption where I was going to do this advancement. I got everything in my inventory prepared, and began to fly down.
I opened up the shulker box and took each potion one by one. I didn't really have much time to do a double check over everything, I just had to trust myself from this point onwards. I splashed each individual potion down at the ground. There was truly so many effects and I was on such a time limit that I couldn't stop to check I had everything. I just had to trust myself from this point onwards. I got the shulker to hit me so I would get the levitation effect, and I had an arrow launch at me to get the glowing effect. I swam through the water to get Dolphin's Grace, and I headed towards the Wither Rose. This would be the last effect that I needed. And there it was! I had completed the How Did We Get Here advancement. I was super excited and so happy that all of this preparation paid off. It was now done. Every single advancement in Minecraft Hardcore was complete. I had one last glance through of the advancement page, and I had done it. I was super proud of myself and extremely happy that I had not only done every single advancement, but also every single secret advancement as well. Take a look at how excited I was. I truly could not believe that I did the How Did We Get Here advancement. I had not only attempted the hardest thing in Minecraft, but I'd completed it as well. Now that this advancement was complete, I left the shulker box in its new home and returned the diamond beacon to its original location. I then spent some time returning my base to its normal state. And once this was done, I had so much creativity. I had really wanted to build an auto smelter for quite some time now, and I knew just how I could do it. I could construct some sort of mansion close to my base to store the auto smelter inside. By having an auto smelter, not only would I be able to smelt things more efficiently, but also extremely fast. So I spent some time gathering materials, and I built this thing. <laughs> Day 557, the Auto Smelter Mansion was complete, and it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. But now that I had this Auto Smelter all up and running, I not only wanted to use it, but also start on a new adventure. And this would be to start progress for a Netherite Beacon. A full Netherite Beacon is extremely rare, and I really wanted one, so I thought now would be a great time to start making some progress on one. And well, if I was going to stand any chance at getting a good start on making a netherite beacon, I would of course need an absolute ton of TNT. So I decided to spend the next few days in my creeper farm. And on day 561, I had a bunch of gunpowder at my disposal, and of course I would need some sand to make this into TNT. So because of this, I went over to my enderman farm and got my shovel up to max durability. Now that I had my shovel at max durability, it was time to get some sand. Before I knew it, it was day 565 and I left the desert to go back to my base because I had so much sand so it was time to craft this into TNT. I filled up as many shulker boxes as I could with TNT and after crafting as much as I could, I ended up getting just under two shulker boxes full. This would definitely be enough to start getting some ancient debris for this netherite beacon. So without any hesitation, I went into the depths of the nether and found the perfect spot for ancient debris. I thought this spot would be perfect, so I dug straight down and began placing TNT. The large amount of TNT I brought with me took some time to place, but it was definitely worth it. I was mining ancient debris left, right, and center. At this point, I truly couldn't believe my eyes. I was getting so much ancient debris, it was almost like I couldn't stop finding it. And so from day 572 to day 580, I spent exploding as much of the nether as I could. <laughs> and swinging my pickaxe to get ancient debris. I glanced in my inventory and noticed I only had one stack of TNT left, so I placed it down block by block and exploded it. I then went through with my pickaxe and mined up all of the ancient debris I could find. It was now time to see just how much ancient debris I had obtained, and when I saw I couldn't believe my eyes, five whole stacks of ancient debris. I stored it safely away in my shulker box and decided to go back to my base, I didn't want anything to happen to this ancient debris. 
I was now back in the overworld and super excited to test out my auto smelter. I placed everything in the correct chest and then turned the machine on. And well, before I knew it, the auto smelter had done its job. Five stacks of ancient debris smelted extremely quickly. Once all of the ancient debris was smelted into netherite scraps, I took this back to my base and turned it into netherite ingots. Once it was all turned into ingots, it was time to make some blocks. And, well, I was able to make eight of them, but I knew I had some spare netherite ingots somewhere. And, well, I did, so in the end I was able to make ten blocks of netherite. This was a great start for the beacon. Even though I didn't have enough to make the whole entire netherite beacon right now, I couldn't just put these blocks away. I had to build some sort of castle to store this netherite beacon. So in the future, when I get more netherite blocks, I could take them into the castle and see how my progress is doing. So for day 583, I gathered up all the materials I would need to make this castle. And by day 584, it was time to build. Here it was, the third castle around this island, and it looked pretty good if I do say so myself. All I needed to do now was go into the castle and place all of the netherite blocks down. I was already making great progress, but I was also running out of time. I didn't have that many days left, and I'd really wanted a horse up to this point, and I was hoping I could find one before day 600. So I took a saddle and some diamond horse armor, and went exploring. <laughs> And not too far into my adventure, I found a horse. It took a little while, but in the end we became great friends and I put on the diamond horse armor. But it was coming up to night time so I had to get the horse home as safe as possible. Eventually I made it back to my base and after looking around I quickly realized that there was no home for the horse. I had to build one. And well, luckily for me I had some spare materials left over from the castle build. I could use these to build the horse a home. So that's exactly what I did. It was day 591 and the horse finally had a home. I opened up the fence gates and the horse walked inside. Look at the big smile on the horse's face. It was super excited to finally have a home. But now seeing as I only had a matter of days left, I knew what had to be done. I had to prove myself once again by defeating the Ender Dragon. So, to respawn the Ender Dragon, I would need End Crystals, which requires Gas Tears, so I would need to head into the depths of the Nether to find some of these. I spent a few days flying around attempting to get Gas Tears. It took some time, but in the end I got four Gas Tears, which is exactly the amount I needed. And by day 597, I began crafting the End Crystals. I placed them into my inventory one by one, and then got some rest. It was now time, and without any hesitation I dived into the end portal. It was time to take the Ender Dragon and prove myself once again. I placed the end crystals in the positions they needed to be, and I awaited the dragon's arrival. The dragon was here, and I went into the air to take out the end crystals one by one. Without these, the ender dragon wouldn't be able to regenerate its health, making the fight so much easier for me. I was able to break my way through these cages and destroy the end crystals inside. It was now just me against the ender dragon. I took some high ground and fired some accurate bow shots. These were doing decent damage, but the dragon decided to go down into the center, so I knew I needed to deal some melee attacks. I was dealing some serious damage, but then the dragon decided to leave the center. It returned into the air, but with its health being so low, it didn't stand a chance. And with one final bow shot, the battle was over. I saw as the Ender Dragon disintegrated in front of my eyes. I felt victorious. And once again, another End City was opened, in return for me defeating the Ender Dragon once again. Now, it was time to head home. I was home, but more importantly, free from the Ender Dragon. It was day 600. 
I had done it. I had survived another 100 days in Minecraft Hardcore. And well, it was now time for day 601. And well, the first thing I wanted to do was check on my cows. I wanted to see if they were doing okay. As I started to get closer, I couldn't help but notice all of the massive smiles on my cows' faces. They were so pleased to see me back. After spending some time with my cows and glancing around my island, I realized that I had to get to work. Although it was only day 601 and I had plenty of days ahead of me, I realized that if I wanted to get a bunch of stuff done in 1000 days, I would have to start now. The first thing I had in mind was a build, but after realizing all of my tools were quite low, I began day 601 by heading over to my enderman farm and getting some XP for my tools. Seeing as all of my gear has mending, I was able to get everything to maximum durability. By the time I arrived back to my base, it was time to start planning out this build that I had in mind. The build would be a small but effective extension onto my base. You see, for quite a few hundred days, I've had this dog inside of my base and, well, I wanted to give it a home. I began by heading into the new secret area of my base to see if I could find any resources to begin this build. This build would mostly be constructed out of things like stone and cobblestone, so only some simple resources would be needed here. Once I had organized all of the building goodies into some shulker boxes and gathered some final stone, it was time to build my dog a brand new home. By day 611, the build was fully constructed and not only did my dog now have a place to rest, but also a place to run around and explore. So after giving my dog a brand new collar, it was time to go and show him the surprise. As my dog approached me with excitement, we both looked around his brand new home. He couldn't quite believe it. I mean, just look at the smile of excitement on his face. And well, after seeing just how excited my dog was with this surprise, I decided to call him Spike. I then went on to spend some time with Spike and also show him around his brand new home. But once this was done, I had to leave Spike because it was time for me to go on a brand new adventure. Now, this adventure is something that I've wanted to do for a while now, but seeing as it takes a sheer amount of preparation and incredible hard work, I had been putting it off. You see, something that I've wanted to do for a while now was drain a full ocean monument. This is not only a time-consuming task, but also a very dangerous one. It's no secret that the ocean monument is filled with dangerous creatures. And well, to even drain one out, I would need to face another one once again. This would mean I needed to prepare some water-breathing potions and also some night vision potions as well. It was time to defeat an ocean monument. Once I had finished brewing up some potions, it was time to drink them and head into the ocean monument. I had to face danger once again. Seeing as I've defeated an ocean monument in the past, I knew exactly what needed to be done. I needed to head in and take on the three outer guardians as fast as possible. I made my way into the entrance, passing all of the hostile guardians. It was time for battle. I made my way through the ocean monument as fast as I could, swinging my swords at all of the guardians that tried to get close. I also had to keep my eyes on my potion effects. I couldn't afford to run out of water breathing. Seeing as I only had limited potions, I had to make this quick. I was struck with the curse of mining fatigue. I knew the outer guardians couldn't be far. As I made my way around the corner, I was face to face with the scariest enemy I had seen in a long time. This thing can deal some serious damage, so I had to keep my distance at all times. After hitting multiple accurate bow shots, I equipped my chest plate so I could absorb some extra damage, and I swam in with my sword, hitting some amazing melee shots. With one final swing of my sword, it was time to track down the final two outer guardians. And well, quickly after taking out the first one, I was able to find the second elder guardian. This one was surprisingly easy to take out which means I only had one more left. I glanced up and it was here, the final outer guardian. I drank two more potions and it was time to fight. It seems I was too quick for the final outer guardian. And there it was, I was successful yet again with another battle. Now all I needed to do was collect the sponge from this ocean monument and begin the process of draining this ocean monument. The first thing I had to do was go ahead and visit my armory. I needed to get a spare shovel in there so I would be able to get a bunch of sand. After spending a few days collecting a bunch of sand and putting it into shulker boxes, it was time to drain the ocean monument. A 
About halfway through the draining process, all my tools were getting quite low and even my bow as well. So I spent a little bit of time bringing all my tools back up to full durability. And not only that, I set up a conduit just outside of where I was draining this ocean monument. Having conduit power while draining an ocean monument is going to be very, very useful because it grants me with permanent water breathing. With all of my tools good to go, it was time to continue draining the ocean monument. The most efficient way for me to drain this ocean monument was to split it up into different sections. Then all I would simply have to do is go through all of these different sections with some sponge and soak up all of the water. It was a pretty time consuming task, but once it was done, I had to go through and destroy all of the sand. I found this pretty easy because it only required me to go through with some torches and break the sand piece by piece. And by day 656, the entire ocean monument was drained. And it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. But it definitely had a lot of work to go and I couldn't wait to turn this into something amazing by the end of 1000 days. I knew exactly what I wanted to transform this ocean monument into, but seeing as I have spent so much time draining it, I wanted to take a short break from this project and do something else for a little bit. The next thing I want to do is tick another goal off the list, and that goal is to complete a full netherite beacon. I have already built a castle to store this netherite beacon and even made some progress on it, but I knew with enough TNT, I would be able to get a bunch more ancient debris, leading to a bunch more netherite blocks. The only problem I had though is I simply didn't have enough shulker boxes to carry all of the TNT I wanted to bring with me. So this required me to go into the end and get a bunch more shulker shells so I can get some more shulker boxes. By day 658, I dived straight into the end portal. It was time to get some shulker boxes. I flew into the end city portal and instantly began looking for some end cities. And well, pretty quickly into my adventure, I had found a fresh end city with an end ship. I got into the ship and began taking out the shulker to see if it would drop a shulker shell. And well, unfortunately, it didn't drop a shulker shell, but this was okay because I was able to get a spare elytra. And not only that, there was chests filled with loot. I then found another shulker, and luckily for me, this one actually dropped a shulker shell, which was exactly what I was looking for. I then continued to get as many shulker shells as I can, and of course, I had to open up the chests inside of the end cities to see what loot was awaiting me. By day 660, I had found yet another end city and couldn't believe my luck. I was getting shulker shells left, right, and center. By the time I had finished exploring end cities for shulker shells, I had collected 12 in total. I carried these safely back into the portal and got home. By the time I had got back to my base, I had crafted six shulker boxes, which now meant that I had 11 shulker boxes to fill with TNT to use in the nether. Now for the next few days, all I really needed to do was start gathering this TNT, and the first step to do this was to use my creeper farm to get as much gunpowder as I possibly could. By day 667, I had gathered stacks and stacks of gunpowder. And on the beginning of day 668, I began gathering the second most important ingredient of TNT. This was sand. Before I knew it, it was day 670, and I couldn't quite believe my eyes. I had gathered so much sand. But as a result of me gathering all of this sand, my shovel began getting pretty low on durability, so I had to travel over to the end to fix it up. But as I got to where my stronghold and my end portal is, Something caught my eye. I realized that every time I came over to my end portal, not only did I have to take a staircase all the way down there, the only build that I had here was this small cobblestone structure. I realized that from now on, I wanted to be able to get into my end portal as fast as I possibly could. So that's when I had a genius idea. I wanted to build something that allowed me to get into the end portal as fast as possible. So that's when I went resource gathering for some purple concrete and getting a bunch of quartz as well. By day 674, I had finished gathering all of the quartz necessary for this build. And on the beginning of day 675, construction began. This build was quite small, but it did the job perfect because I was able to head up this staircase and jump straight down into the end portal. This method of getting into the end portal was not only incredibly genius, but also incredibly fast. Once I was in the end, I brought my shovel up to maximum durability, and on day 679, it was time to make all of this sand and gunpowder into TNT. This process took some time, but by the end of it, I had thousands and thousands of blocks of TNT. I couldn't quite wait to see just how much ancient debris I would be able to gather with all of this. I also made a purple shulker box, and this would be where I would store all of the ancient debris on this ancient debris mining trip. I spent some time looking around for the perfect spot to mine ancient debris, and before I knew it, I had found the best spot. And by the middle of day 681, ancient debris mining was well underway. Not only mining out tunnels for all of this TNT, but also placing it. 
Once I was done with that, it was time for the fun part, exploding every piece of TNT. I watched as I saw all of the TNT reveal the ancient debris from behind. I also didn't want to miss mining any ancient debris, so I kept my eyes peeled at all times. Between day 683 and day 774, I exploded all of the TNT from the shulker boxes. I couldn't quite believe my eyes. The amount of ancient debris I was getting was just absolutely amazing. I mined loads and loads and loads of ancient debris. I then got down to my final seven stacks of TNT. It was time to use all of this and then I could take a look in my purple shulker box and see just how much ancient debris I had gathered from this mining trip. Once I exploded the final stacks that I had and mined up all of the ancient debris, it was then time to open up the purple shulker box and reveal just how much I collected. And when I saw it, I was shocked. I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. I had mined a total of just under 16 stacks of ancient debris. With all of this, I was excited to see just how much netherite beacon progress I could make. I safely picked up the purple shulker box and kept it in my inventory. I couldn't get too excited because I had to take this shulker box safely back to my base without anything happening to it. Day 776 was here, and I'd made it back to my nether base. I felt victorious. I'd used thousands of stacks of TNT and obtained myself so much netherite. It was time to turn this all into netherite ingots and then into blocks. When I got back to my base, the first thing I did was look around for some gold, because all I would simply need to do now is smelt all of this ancient debris into netherite scraps, combine it with gold, and ultimately make the netherite ingots that I was looking for. But while I was looking for gold, I ran into just a small problem. I simply didn't have enough. So I knew the fastest way to get gold was a gold farm that I could build on the roof of the nether. The contraption itself is pretty simple to build, so on day 778, I went out to collect some magma blocks. This would be a key material in building the gold farm. Once I had obtained a bunch of magma blocks, I made some components for the farm. Things such as hoppers and also carpets. Another thing I would need for this farm is turtle eggs and, well, I found some turtles nearby and was able to pick some of those up. And well, on day 782, I prepared everything I would need in these shulker boxes. Now all I would need to do is get onto the roof of the nether. As I made my way through the portal, I got to the top of the nether and was able to end a pearl through the bedrock with ease. Now all I would need to do is set up a simple contraption that would allow me to break a piece of bedrock. This tactic is extremely risky because it contains TNT, but it also takes an immense amount of timing and also perfect block placement. And well, I was easily able to get it done. I now had a way that I could get straight from the nether, and using some ladders, I could get straight to the nether roof. Now that was done, it was time to build the farm. It was now day 810, and after using the gold farm, I was able to see just how effective it was. But more importantly, I now had enough gold to make the netherite ingots. I made my way into the auto smelter mansion and loaded up my auto smelter machine with all of the ancient debris. I then flicked the switch and watched the machine go to work. Smelting the ancient debris did take some time, but in the end, it was completely worth it. Because as I turned the machine off and looked in the chest, all of the ancient debris had been turned into netherite scraps. I then took all of the scraps into my base and combined them with some gold. And before I knew it, I had the most amount of netherite I have ever seen. Nearly four complete stacks of netherite. I couldn't believe my eyes. After having some fun, I put it all in my crafting table and constructed the maximum amount of blocks I could make. I then took this over to the netherite castle and decided to display my progress so far. Just take a look at this. From the front angle, it almost looks as if it's complete. Even though I had made some great progress, this is definitely something that will be fully complete before 2000 days. I also realized that I didn't have a beacon to put on top of this, so it was time to head into the nether and go to the fortress. I needed to collect some wither skulls, but I wouldn't just be fighting one wither. I wanted to fight three at the same time. So ultimately, I could make three beacons. One for the netherite beacon, and then I would have two spare for some other building projects. I was also feeling very brave and definitely thought I was worthy of taking on three withers at once. So after getting the first few witherheads, I had to repair my sword and I got right back into action. I needed nine in total. My luck was amazing. It was almost as if the wither skeletons didn't want to stop giving me the wither skeleton skulls.
taking out wither after wither, I was able to get the amount of skeleton skulls that I was looking for. I had nine in total. Now all I needed to do was take on the withers themselves. So I made my way back home and said goodbye to my dog Spike, because it may be the last time I get to see him again. I also did the same thing with all of my villagers and iron golems, also my pet cows as well. Battling three withers at once is going to be extremely risky, so I had to make sure that nothing is to go wrong in this battle. As I flew out and dug underground into a spot where I was going to fight these withers, I got myself prepared. It was time for battle. Okay, here we go. I have a totem in my hand if anything goes wrong, and let's also go ahead and grab my strength potions. Okay, three of these should be good, and let's also get an instant health as well. Well, I guess this is it. Let's drink the strength potion, and let's hope this goes okay. Okay, let's put the wither skulls all in the place like this. Here we go. Okay, let's run, let's run, let's run. All right, so we have some strength potions. We also have the instant health. So let's hope this goes okay. There's literally three withers right here. I'm extremely scared, and this- Oh, whoa, okay. Our hearts are already- Okay, we need to- Okay, hold up, hold up. Uh, I didn't bring any golden apples, and our hearts are already at four hearts. Okay, let's just try and take them out one by one. We're nearly there with the first one. Let's go. Oh, okay, there we go. We took the first one out. We got the star from that one. Where are the other two? Our hearts are going down, but we should be good. This is extremely scary, okay? I was able to get the Wither's attention with a bow shot and do some serious damage. The second one's nearly down. Let's just go for it. All right, there we go. Perfect. We have two Nether Stars right now. Let's regenerate before we go for the third one. Is our totem going to have to be used right now? Oh, okay, that was close. One and a half hearts. We were literally so close to using our totem. The third and final Wither got stuck in a cave. I had to lure it out. Things were about to get dangerous. Uh, wait a second. It has somehow escaped into this cave. This is going to be risky, but we have to do it. I don't know how it escaped to this cave. I really have no idea. All right, come here, Wither. We need to take you out. Oh, no, we can't use our sword just yet. I do not want to take any more damage. I have no more strength potions. We have to take this out. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. I have nowhere to go. I have nowhere to go. Go, 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 go. Oh, no, 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 no. We need to run. We need to run. We need to run. Oh, no, no. We're really low. We are really low. Our totem may get used. We may have to use our totem right now. Okay, we are at three hearts. We can just pretty much just go for some sword attacks. My hearts were rapidly decreasing. I needed to grab out a spare totem of undying if anything was to go wrong. We are in some serious danger right now. We have 12 seconds of the wither effect. We need to pop these totems. Okay. Luckily, we have some more. Whew, okay, I did not expect to use a totem, but that was close. Come on. Let's just take this out without getting hit. Oh, there we go, finally. If the wither didn't get stuck in the cave, we would have been absolutely fine. But you know what? We have successfully just taken out three withers, which means we now have three nether stars. So let's get back to base and build some beacons. By day 848, I was back at my base. And the first thing that I did was craft all three beacons. Having three beacons was awesome, and I couldn't wait to use the first one. I used this beacon in the netherite castle to power the netherite beacon. I then used a netherite ingot to power the beacon itself, and well, there it was, a beacon that was being powered by netherite blocks. Once this was done, I wanted to build an extension onto my island, and well, seeing as I love building castles, I wanted to build another one, but this one would be a little bit different. I wanted to build a castle that would showcase all of the things that I had achieved in this hardcore world so far. Things like my ender dragon egg, valuables such as totems of undying and full netherite gear, but also a dragon head. So after collecting all of the resources I needed and organizing them into shulker boxes, it was time to build the ultimate castle. By day 888, the ultimate castle was complete. And well, it looked amazing. The only things I had to do now was put things inside of the castle itself, such as my dragon egg, my dragon head, and also a spare elytra I had. Now I wanted to fill this area up with netherite armor and also netherite tools. And on this side over here, I wanted to display 10 totems of undying. And well, seeing as I didn't have all of this laying around, I would have to go out and get it myself. So I came up with a pretty genius idea to get the totems of undying, and this would be a raid farm. Once I'd found the perfect location to build this raid farm, I put everything into place. And for this farm to work efficiently, I would also need some villagers. So after spending some time getting the villagers over to the raid farm, I was able to test this thing out. I had to start by getting the bad omen effect and then heading back over to the farm to activate a raid. I quickly got back to the farm and it was time to see if this thing worked. To 
my surprise, the farm was working perfectly. I couldn't wait to see just how many totems I was going to get from this. And well, when I opened the chest, I couldn't quite believe it. There were so many totems. So I grabbed all of these and took them back to the castle. I then put them one by one into their item frames. I now had a wall of totems of undying. These totems were a great addition to the castle. Now all I needed to do was get some netherite tools and armor. But after looking in my shulker box, I realized the lack of diamonds I have. I would need to go on a quick mining trip to get some diamonds so then I can ultimately make netherite armor. So for the next few days, I was down in the depths of the caves. I was using my silk touch pickaxe to not only mine diamonds, but also coal as well, because I didn't want to run out of coal anytime soon. So this mining trip was a perfect way I could get some. I was then able to silk touch a bunch of diamonds with my pickaxe. And before I knew it, it was day 919, and I placed all of my ores ready to mine, starting with coal, and then all of my diamonds. In total, I was able to get 46 diamonds from this mining trip, but combined with the diamonds I already had, that would be a total of a stack and 20 diamonds. This was more than enough to craft two sets of diamond armor and a full set of tools. And seeing as I wanted to turn all of this into netherite, I had to borrow some blocks from my netherite beacon. But before I turned anything into netherite, I wanted to enchant it first. So for that reason, I dived into the end portal and it was time to get a bunch of XP. In total, I now had 70 XP levels, which was the perfect amount. So when I got back to my base, I turned all of the gear into netherite, and I enchanted everything to the maximum level. Although, while I was enchanting, I wasn't really too happy with my sword enchantment, so after a few tries, I was able to get an enchantment that I was happy with. I then put everything on display in my castle, and it was looking great. The castle was looking pretty good if I do say so myself, and also did a great job in showcasing all of my achievements. It was now day 925, and I was running out of time to decorate my ocean monument, which is something that I really wanted to get done before the end of 1000 days. So after smelting a bunch of glass, and getting some extra resources, it was time to decorate the ocean monument. Midway through decorating the ocean monument, I found a beacon and also a nether star that I had spare. This must have been something that I collected a while ago and completely forgot about. But this was perfect because I now had four beacons to decorate the ocean monument with. There it was. The ocean monument was fully decorated and it looked pretty good if I do say so myself. After spending some time looking around my ocean monument, I realized that it was day 985, and day 1000 was getting closer and closer. So because of this, I wanted to start on making a firework display, which I would use on day 1000. So I made as many fireworks as I can. and set up a contraption on my island, which would send all of the fireworks into the sky and display all of them. I prepared all of the fireworks, but there was one more thing I had to do before I use all of them, and it was to prove myself once again. And I would do this by slaying the Ender Dragon once again. To respawn the Ender Dragon, I need End Crystals, which requires me to get some Gas Tears. I was getting quite lucky. I was flying around and picking up Gas Tears left, right, and center. And wow, with the assistance of my Looting Three Sword, I was able to get all of the Gas Tears I was looking for. It was now time to get back to my base and craft the end crystals. I individually placed all four in my inventory. It was time to go to the end. I was here. It was time to place the end crystals down one by one. The end crystals were placed. Now all I needed to do was await the dragon's arrival. The obsidian poles summoned themselves once again. It was time to battle. The dragon was here. I instantly used my elytras to get into the air. With some accurate bow shots, I was able to take out the end crystals. This would stop the ender dragon from being able to regenerate itself. And with one final bow shot, the only end crystal I had to take out were the ones in the cages. I was able to get on top of this end crystal and destroy it. I then located the second end crystal and took it out. 
all of the end crystals were gone. All I needed to do now was take out the dragon itself. But as I went in to swing my sword, the ender dragon hit me back. Things got dangerous, but I was okay. Seeing as I had my totem of undying on me, I would be fine. The ender dragon was flying around the air, and it wasn't coming down to the center. So I had to use my bow to deal serious amounts of damage. The ender dragon was down to half health. It was time to get more accurate with the bow shots and more faster on my feet. The ender dragon came down once again, but the center was covered in dragon's breath. There was no way I could deal sword strikes. That was until the dragon's breath cleared up. I was able to go in and deal some more sword attacks. As the fight was just about to be over, the dragon hit me back. I knew exactly what needed to be done. There it was, I had taken out the Ender Dragon once again. I felt victorious. And not only that, an End City portal was opened in return for me defeating the Ender Dragon. I was home, but more importantly, safe from the Ender Dragon. It was now time to use the firework display. By the time I had prepared everything, it was the night of day 999. And it was time to take a look at this firework display. After the firework display, I got some rest. And it was now day 1000. I had done it. I had successfully survived 1000 days in Minecraft Hardcore. But there's a lot of stuff I want to get done in 2000 days, so let me know down below in the comments if you want to see that. But apart from that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed making it. And as I said, let me know if you want to see 2000 days. Apart from that, thank you guys so much for watching and have a great rest of your day. Peace.